Few places on the planet are as picturesque and unique as Northern California. But the area also sits on one of the largest fault lines in North America, making it prone to earthquakes. And that is exactly what befell the Napa region at approximately 3.20 this morning, local time. Welcome to Sonoma Raceway, everyone. I'm Brian Till, and we're here for the Verizon IndyCar GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma that will be coming up shortly. But our thoughts are with all of those that were involved or affected in last night's event. Now, Sonoma Raceway is approximately 15 miles southwest of Napa and the, lo and the location of the epicenter. And as you can see, the damage was extensive to businesses and homes in the area. Some truly startling pictures as you look at walls crumbling down, storefronts that were damaged, and all of that. And look at some of the photos from near the area from Twitter continuing to show just how devastating one of these events can be. The Napa quake, the strongest in the area since 1989. Truly starting, startling. Not only were the residents of the area obviously affected, but many of the teams competing here this weekend were staying in the area, including Penske and drivers Will Power and Elio Castroneves. And as the pressure of the championship weren't enough for these two guys, they now had to deal with being evacuated from their hotel in the middle of the night and having very little sleep. Let's hear from Will Power, who is with Marty Snyder. Check in with our championship leader. How was your 3.20 a.m. wake-up call? Describe the scene in your room from the earthquake, and did you realize right away what was going on? I, I, man, I thought it was all over. I thought that was the end of the earth. But, um, yeah, I, it was, man, the, the hotel was destroyed. And, you know, I didn't realize that we were very close to the epicenter, so I figured that somewhere else got hit real hard. I didn't even think there'd be a race, but then we realized that that was, that was literally the epicenter. So, uh Man, that was, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I was in a deep sleep and that, is a, that was such a shock. And you were telling me glass shattered everywhere and, and did you get any sleep after that, after waking up at 3.20 a.m.? Did you get any sleep at all? Um, I had laid, laid down for 45 minutes, I guess, uh, when I got to track at 6.30 or something. I don't feel that bad, but um, you know, uh, it's definitely not the way you want to wake up. That was uh, that was unbelievable, man. I really thought I thought I was going to die. Well, we're glad that you did not. But let's talk about this championship hunt. You told me back in March I'm going to focus on each day as it comes. Not worry about past days. Not worry about future days. Are you truly just worried about a Sonoma win and not thinking championship today? Oh uh, yeah, we understand the situation. The championship. You know, there's uh, realistically there's probably three other guys in it, and um, you know we'll kind of key off them. Lack of sleep or not, Will Power going to try to win this championship. The first one for Penske since 2006. Kevin Lee. Walking with Elio Castroneves heading to driver introductions. You're a race car driver. You, It's part of the, the job. You deal with danger. You've crashed at 230 miles an hour. But you told me this morning, that's as scared as I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was a, it was definitely a tough one. I, <laughs> I, um, Waking up, a wake-up call that you don't expect like that is not, uh, it's not the way you want it. So about 3.30 in the morning, we all evacuated from the hotel and it stayed about an hour and a half. And uh, man, it was, uh, it was amazing. I mean, you see all the glasses uh, from the bathroom and uh, stuff inside the room that uh, I, never, I never knew we had that. But one thing I tell you, Whoever put those pictures on the wall, it never crooked. I wanted that guy to put some pictures, nail my pictures over there. But in the end of the day, thank God, I'm not sure what happened in, um, with everyone, but at least where we were, nobody got hurt. And uh, man, wow, that was the scariest thing of my life. Well, I guess one thing we can say is it takes a little bit of focus off the championship for a moment, and you can think about something else. But let's talk championship now. You've been here many times, 10 times. You finished in the top four. What have you learned before? that can help you this time around? Yeah, the Hitachi Chevy, man, is it's really fast. Yesterday, uh, like I said, uh, starting six is not the fair position. But in the end of the day, we did a good warm up. We make sure we uh, try to expect and expect, especially with the beautiful weather like we have here and the heat that probably is gonna come up. So we, uh, we gotta keep going. We have not much uh, uh, to lose in this place, in this position. We wanna make sure we, we reduce as much as point as possible from Will and go for the, for the last one. Well, he's been up since 3.15, so he's been ready to race for a while. He'll start six, chasing his teammate, Will Power. Brian. Well, he's thinking about how to hang pictures on the wall, so you got to think that he's the pressure of the championship off a little bit. With the extensive damage in the area, though, and the ongoing emergency efforts, Governor Jerry Brown has declared a state of emergency for the Napa area, and that is certainly understandable. Luckily, the facility here has escaped damage, and that's good news for Verizon IndyCar Series fans. For more on the situation here at Sonoma Raceway, let's hear from Kelly Stavis, who's with Steve Page, president of Sonoma Raceway. 
Well, Steve, we all got quite the wake-up call from Mother Nature this morning at 3.30. What course of action did you take to ensure that the track and its facilities were safe for today's activities? Well, we got on it pretty quickly. Uh, it was, you know, it's a, it was an interesting earthquake. It was very intense, but it was very localized. Uh, in Sonoma, it felt like the world was coming to an end. San Francisco, people hardly felt it. So we, our whole team was out here within a few minutes inspecting grandstands, gas lines, all of our emergency services and everything. Everybody's in place. Uh, so we're very confident and we have people in place. We have some aftershocks. But it was a scary moment. Well, the good news is it's turned into a beautiful day and it seems like we have a good crowd on hand. How did you get the word out to everyone that the show would go on as usual? Well, the media has been covering this nonstop, almost to the point of making it sound a little bit more intense than it really is. Because all the roads are open and we've got a lot of folks coming in. So we were, we've were we been on the line with the media all morning just making sure people know the race was on. Looking forward to a great day of racing. Thank you, Steve. Brian? Well, thank you, Kelly. I will say that this morning's quake certainly not the wake-up call that I expected, that many of us expected, drivers included. Well, Kelly, it was, uh, it was exciting. <laughs> it was my first earthquake ever, and uh, I didn't know what to think. I'm staying in my bus here in Sonoma, and uh, the whole bus felt like it was walking on the hill. It was really strange. There was a lot of noise as well. And uh, my concern is we were, we're really close to a drop-off so, uh, of, the, of the hill, and I thought we were going to go down. So. Yeah, it was crashing and banging, stuff flying across the room and um, just got up. My brother was sleeping in the room next door, so checked he was all right. Told him what had happened. It wasn't me shaking his bed, which he thought he was initially. <laughs> and the building was swaying so much. And I think uh, got wine glasses falling all over the place, pictures off the walls. It was pretty big. Well, I at least was able to grab a towel to wrap around myself before we were <laughs> thrown outside at 3 a.m. So it was uh, it was weird, man. I mean, I've never been through an earthquake. And, uh, I mean, everything was, was falling off, all the shelves. The bed ended up two feet off the wall. We had uh, sprinkler pipes break in the, on the same floor. So it was... Uh, it was different. It was an experience. I just thought about the kid being up front, you know, our, our, our little guy. Um, he slept through it, though. It's funny. He can wake up when we whisper, but he'll sleep through an earthquake. Go figure. Well, in spite of the earthquake, fans filling in here at Sonoma. Coming up, I'll be joined by two gentlemen who know what it takes to win an IndyCar championship. We'll be right back to Sonoma. You're watching IndyCar Live, brought to you by Verizon and IndyCar. Driving technology, 2014 Verizon IndyCar Series. All season long, it has been a battle to control the IndyCar Championship. We've had 10 different winners in 16 races. Six drivers still in contention, even though time is certainly running short for several of those with only two races left in the season. Now, last weekend in Milwaukee, Ryan Hunter Ray was going for his fourth win on the historic Milwaukee Mile and his third consecutive victory there in an attempt to stay in the title chase. What may not have been expected was the oval prowess of Will Power and the number 12 Verizon machine. This track gets everybody's attention because of the complexity and the difficulty. 250 laps of the Milwaukee Mile, let's go! Race leader, every single lap has been Will Power. Here comes TK and gets power! Will's got to make a smart decision here and he's back. Look at Kennard, same corner and Power responds. Can Power hold him off? What a drive from these two men. Trouble with Hunter Rayleigh. In a year that he'll remember forever for winning the Indianapolis 500. It has been extraordinary what he's had to endure. The three-time winner here at Milwaukee is out of this race, and that is going to hurt his championship chances. Is that the first thing that went through your mind? There goes the championship. Yeah, for sure. This is probably our championship hopes going up in smoke right now, but it is what it is. That's racing. In the background is the ever-present one, Pablo Montoya. Here he comes, racing for the lead. He's chasing power down. He's got to try and get by Hawksworth. This traffic is not helping JPM. Montoya is not getting this done. Will Power has led 197 laps, and he has certainly been in command. It's the third time in his career that he has led the championship with three to go. Will Power wins at the Milwaukee Mile. I love winning on Oval. This one is a big one, and we're down to just two races. Just a perfect day, you know, led a lot of laps and uh, didn't even think of points today. I just put my head down and just got to keep moving forward, man. 
Joining me now, IndyCar champion Paul Tracy and three-time champion and Indy 500 winner Sam Hornish Jr. Now, these guys certainly bring a unique perspective to this title run because they both know the pressures that Will Power and Elio Castroneves are going through. We talk about big pictures. Two races left, and you've got to attack. You can't leave anything on the table, but you've got to think championship. Now, when we think Will Power, Paul, a lot of people have said there's a lot of Paul Tracy <laughs> in Will Power. You've been in this position. What does Will Power have to do to win this championship? Well, I think Will Power, obviously, he drives a lot like how I used to drive. It's win or bust, all or nothing. And that's really been his Achilles heel all this year. So he's got to just focus. He's got to have Cindric in his corner, giving him the correct information, understanding when things are starting to ramp up. cindric has got to keep him under control and just manage his race. And if he can do that, he usually ends up in the winner's circle. And Sam, for you, you've raced against Elio when you were at Panther Racing. You raced with him at Penske Racing. So you kind of know the ins and outs of his thinking. And you know his situation. In 2002, Sam Hornish Jr., you had to win the final two races to win the championship. You did just that. Do you give him your playbook? Does, it, does he know what it is that you did in 2002? Well, if he was watching, he should know. But uh, <laughs> obviously, Elio is one of those kind of guys. He's got a lot of charisma. He can go out there. He can do a lot of different things. He needs to get into Will Power's head a little bit, whether it's on track or off a track. But this isn't a make or break weekend for him. All he needs to do is keep Will Power in his sights this weekend, be able to make sure that he has an attainable gap to be able to go to next weekend. Uh, Fontana is a place where Elio has been good at in the past, very fast there last year. And I think that this weekend is all about trying to maintain that pressure and not give Will too much of a head start going into the next weekend because we know how good Will here is, uh, is here at Fontana. Well, obviously, two races left, two very different types of racetracks. Road course here, super speedway next time. What does Will need to do at the start, Paul? Does he attack or does he just sit, be smart and sit back? Well, I think what he's going to do is he's going to try to get in the lead at the start, and then he's going to try to maintain his tires, focus on not using up those rear tires. He really abused them in qualifying. He was sliding sideways. He's going to try to maintain and keep the tires under control, and fuel mileage is going to be crucial here. Well, I really believe that Will feels like it's one of those things where this is a weekend for him to capitalize, to be able to go out there, start on the pole, get a, get points for that, to be able to go out there, try to lead the most laps and do the things that he knows he's capable of doing. Winning you know, three out of the last four here, he's obviously got a lot of speed. And by being able to go out there and to have a strong weekend this weekend, he can open that gap up enough to give him a little bit of breathing room for next weekend maybe. Well, it's not just about Will Power and Elio Castroneves. There's a third potential player, two-time winner Simon Pagino, who is 93 points back. And while 93 points, may be a lot to gain over two races. He will certainly not be giving up. Kelly? Simon Pagano sits third in the point standings, but now has just two races left to overcome a 93-point deficit. Simon, timing is bad. Your car, you've been struggling with it all weekend. You're starting 15th. How will you overcome it in the race? It's not the best situation, is it? But, uh, you know, in those situations, uh, you have to fight as hard as you can, and uh, I've got what I've got. I just have to fight and, uh, and, and hope for the best. A little bit of luck, maybe a, a creative strategy can help me, and, uh, and try to get back to the front where we usually belong. But uh, yeah, it has been a difficult weekend, I'm not going to lie. Um, we've been working hard, but it's just not enough. A couple of wins on the season. How will you reflect on 2014? I think it's been a good season. Uh, we've had a, our fair of bad luck lately, but um, apart from that, I mean, the car has been competitive. We, uh, we fought with, uh, with Spensky, Ganassi and Andretti all year long, and uh, we're still third in the championship. We, we still have a good chance, you know, and uh, so it's, it's pretty good. So far, it's been a good season. Simon Pagano looking to get back into this championship fight. Kelly, Juan Pablo and Montoya and I will jump off of this truck. Oh, I hope that goes well. How are you? Starting 19th today after the penalty and qualifying. What's a realistic expectation for a result today from you? I think we got a really quick car, you know what I mean? We've been, I felt like we were really good right before qualifying, so I was really disappointed. I felt really good on new tires more than stickers, so, and this morning was really good, it was consistent. You know, everybody at Verizon has been doing a really good job for us, and you know, everybody in Team Penske, so it's, it's exciting. I mean, we just gotta minimize the damage. You get extra points, by the way, for holding the rope for our camera guy, Kevin. So good, good job by you. Nobody's gained more points in the last eight races than you. What has clicked in the last few months? It's just, you know, we've been just getting better and better and better and better. If you see how many things have happened as well, it's kind of shocking. You know what I mean? You look at what happened in Iowa and, you know, we had a few, few bad races as well where we could have been a lot better. So overall, it's, it's good. I mean... It's a good way to finish the year knowing going into next year with the experience I have right now. You know, the start of this year was really hard. I was so far off, it wasn't even funny. 
Now you're running very well. I got to ask you about the earthquake. You were one mile from the epicenter. Describe the scene for you. Awful, like awful. Like my shit, my was the bed. When it woke me up, it was shaking, and he moved about two feet of the wall. Anything that I was in, like in the bathroom went to the floor. Every table turned over. I mean, it was bad. I asked him, Ryan, I said, have you slept since then? He said, are you kidding me? I couldn't sleep after that. No way. Well, when Juan Pablo Montoya says it's going to be exciting, you've got to believe that it is. But how many times can this young driver knock on victory's door? We'll talk to Front Row Joe next when we come back to Sonoma Raceway, the Verizon IndyCar Series. Welcome back to IndyCar Live from Sonoma, San Francisco's iconic Lombard Street. Great shots there of its twists and turns, similar to the twists and turns, in fact, of the last few races for Joseph Newgarden. Take a look at the stats that he has racked up so far this season. He's had pole, or front row starts, three front row starts. That's why we call him Front Row Joe. 17 laps led, three top 10 finishes, and has been so close to winning on several occasions, just coming up short. His qualifying effort yesterday was just shy of the pole, and Robin Miller is with the driver who could have an impact on this season's championship at the drop of the green today. Robin? Joseph Newgarden, another great qualifying performance. Before we talk about that, though, the big news this morning, you re-up with Sarah Fisher and Ed Carpenter for 2015. I think a lot of people are happy about that. Yeah, I think it's a good move. I think it's, um, you know, first and foremost, you know, I, I got a contract to start with. You know, not a lot of guys get that, so, you know, Wink and Sarah are, are huge parts of that. They gave me an opportunity to be an IndyCar driver, and They've, uh, you know, they continue to give me another opportunity. So that's first and foremost. I'm excited to be here. I think it's going to be a really strong group. Love Ed. Love Ed Carpenter Racing. I think they're both very popular groups within the motorsport industry. And, and I honestly believe that them together is going to be a very strong duo next year. All right. You started on the outside of the front row at Long Beach and challenged Frank Keaty, and you lost that one, but you were just a rookie. Then you got the best at Canaan at Mid-Ohio starting in the front row. Today you got Will Power. He's got to be careful, so you're going to go for it in the first corner. Hey, I'm not worried about this championship. I'm not in it, you know, so I'm going to drive normal. I don't think you'd, you know, run a race any differently. You know, I'm not going to try and do anything silly to Will, and I don't want to obviously affect their championship, but I think you just race as normal. He's got his things to worry about, and all I'm worried about is having a good race. So how that's going to play out, I'm not sure. I'm definitely going to be going for it and, you know, seeing what we can do. I think the biggest thing for me, though, is to not let him get away too much. He's obviously very good here. He knows how to save fuel, save his rear tires, and, you know, the biggest thing is he can't get too far into the distance. we got to latch on to him, try and make some moves in the pit, and then we'll see where we're at at the end of the race. All right, good luck. Joseph Newgarden looking for his first victory, starting second today. Well, anytime you can secure a new contract before season's end, that's good news. But, Paul, all right, I heard two different things in that interview. I heard I've got a new contract, and I don't care about Will Power. So <laughs> yeah. at the start, Joseph Newgarden, is he going to prove that he's worth his weight in that new contract that he has? Well, obviously, you don't want to upset the championship leader, and you certainly don't want to upset the, uh, Team Penske by doing anything silly, like you said. But, you know, Joseph Newgarden has now got some security. He knows where he's going to be next year. He knows he's got a newly formed team with Ed Carpenter, and that looks like a great organization. So he really is the future of IndyCar. He's 23 years old. He's American. He's good-looking. He's fast. He scores poles. He's just got to get to the finish line now and win some races. But, you know, guys like him and Graham and Marco, they're the future of the sport now. You got Montoya and Elio and, and uh, Kanan. They're all getting to 40 now. So the sands of time for them are nearly up. They've only got a couple years left. You're killing me talking about 40 and only a couple of years left. All right, let's go back now, though, and talk about our top two title contenders. When you ride on board with Will Power and Elio Castroneves, you see some very different driving styles, Sam. Well, for sure. One of the things that you always think about when you think about Elio Castroneves is his wild and crazy personality. But basically, these two drivers, when they get into the car, they drive the cars a lot differently than how they act outside the race car. Elio, very smooth, taking care of the car. Uh, just, you know, really cautious inputs about what he's doing, where his will gets back to the throttle real hard, sliding the back and around, having to make big corrections. This racetrack is one of those places where you have to work on saving those rear tires. And while Will has been so good here. I think he knows when it's time to go like it was here in qualifying and the difference between when it's time to take care of the, the car and the tires itself. And I think the onboard shots today are going to be telling. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. You'll be right here with us to watch the IndyCar race from Sonoma. You're watching IndyCar Live brought to you by Verizon and IndyCar. Driving Technology 2014 Verizon IndyCar Series. Sonoma Raceway, a challenging 12-turn, 2.3-mile road course. We've heard from the drivers on how demanding and difficult the setup is. Now we have Ryan Hunter Ray's viewpoint, courtesy of GoPro. I 
I'm Ryan hunter Ray, and this is the GoPro Course Preview. Alright, here we are starting another intense lap at Sonoma. We're grabbing six gear across the start finish line. This is always an action packed spot for the start of the race coming up the hill turn two. It's pretty tricky here because the rear of the car gets very light on exit as you're grabbing third, fourth gear. As you come up to the 3 3 a complex and fourth gear, big compression here, the wheel gets heavy, up over the crest, completely blind. The wheel gets light, the rear steps out, and now down into turn four as you see Carlos going by here. Coming up to turn six, completely blind over the crest here at turn in. Down the hill, front washes out just a bit, then hooks up, then you're right back to the power, foot flat on the floor. And up to six gear, the best passing zone on the track this is where you see most of the passing happen, as you see here now. Going by Carlos, down to first gear for the hairpin. This is a pretty tricky corner, uh, just because you're putting down 700 plus horsepower on the way out. Coming up to the S's here, flying through this section, blind over the crest again here, and hard on the brakes, another passing zone over each of these curves, smash the curves, putting the power down in first gear, second gear, grabbing gears all the way up to fifth gear. As you come down to the hairpin here, which is another passing zone, as you see Carlos just did. Over the curves here at Apex and uh, set up your competition once again as you cross the start finish line. And that completes a lap of Simona. Absolutely fantastic shots there. You'll see more today. Onboard footage from Will Powers' car will be streamed by Verizon. To download the IndyCar 14 app, visit verizon.com slash IndyCar, the App Store, or Google Play. Verizon and IndyCar, driving technology. Cars lining up and getting ready to go. Thanks for watching IndyCar Live on NBCSN, presented by Verizon. The command to fire engines is next. In Milwaukee last week, IndyCar's Will Power conquered the one-mile oval and proved to the field why he is sitting atop the championship standings. Qualifying on pole and holding off charges from 2004 champion Tony Kanaan, Will enjoyed the sweet taste of victory before heading west to Sonoma, a track where he has quite the checkered past. From a season-ending crash in 2009 to winning his third race here last season, this track can also symbolize Will's run for this year's championship. From the lows of controversial calls, to the highs of victory lane at St. Pete and Detroit earlier in the season. But Will knows today starts the California countdown to the championship, and he must once again pull out all the stops to hold off other contenders for the title. NBCSN's coverage of the GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma is next right here. It is a beautiful day in Sonoma, and we are thinking of the championship, of course, but also thinking of our neighbors just down the road in Napa after the earthquake last night. But fans still filling the stands here at the racetrack waiting to see IndyCar action. And that is a good thing, the flyover. Now, let's get to the command to start engines here in Sonoma. It's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome GoPro Senior Director of Engineering Programs, David Northway. Get ready to GoPro drivers, start your engines. Power told me before the Milwaukee race last week, if they win two of the final three races of the season, he wins the championship in 2014. Guess what? Last week, they won Milwaukee, and he's at his best racetrack this week at Sonoma, where in the last four races, he hasn't finished worse than second. He admitted to me moments ago, yes, we're thinking championship today, but you know what? A win might take care of that championship anyway, Kevin. 
Marty, this is the sixth time Elio Castroneves has been either first or second in the championship going into the final two races. He's still looking for that elusive championship. He wants to attack today, but he told me, I also need to make sure I have a chance to fight in the finale in Fontana, Kelly. Kevin yeah, Simon Pagino was third in the point standings and very much alive in that championship race, but not only does he have a lot of points to make up, he's got a lot of ground to cover today. He's been struggling with breaking all weekend long, can only manage a 15th place qualifying effort, so at a particularly tough place to pass, he'll be starting from row eight. Brian? Cars rolling out of pit road, lining up, and look, there's another one out there. Who is it? Well, don't miss a chance to get in on Honda's fastest seat in sports sweepstakes. Enter by logging on to shophonda.com. Today's lucky winner, Kelly Yeager from Robbinsdale, Minnesota. Kelly, can you hear me? It's Brian Till in the booth. Yes, I can. This is so amazing. A dream come <laughs> true to be in a ride with an Andretti. You're in a car with Mario Andretti, a Verizon IndyCar around Sonoma. Does it get any better? No, this is great. <laughs> And I want to say hi to everybody back home. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Kelly may be out of breath. We're going to let her catch her breath. But if you want to ride where she is, you can win by logging on to shophonda.com. Kelly won the opportunity to start today's race with Indy 500 champion Mario Andretti. I, heck, I'd like to go do that. Let's take a look now at the mother's starting grid, mother's polished starting grid. Will Power on pole, the 36th pole position of his IndyCar career at Joseph Newgarden. I think the start is going to be exciting. Scott Dixon, he still has a chance at the championship and a great qualifying for James Hinchcliffe. Yeah, big rebound for James Hinchcliffe. That was much needed. We have Ryan Brett Briscoe, another good rebound for him. This is a good track for him. He's a past winner. And our other championship points contender, Castro Neves, starting on row three. Elio's got to hang in there in six. He can't just give it up, right, Sam? Well, he definitely has his work cut out for him to be able to get up there and con compete with Paul, uh, com <laughs> compete with, uh, you know, Will today. It's obviously, uh, you know, Will having that pole is, is a good thing for him. And rookie Carlos Munoz starts right alongside his Andretti Autosport teammate Ryan hunter Ray, frustrated with his qualifying yesterday to Charlie Kimball, Michaela Lotion in a row six, and some drivers a little bit further back that you didn't expect to see there. Marco Andretti having another qualifying effort that he would just as soon forget, and Simon Pagino, who struggled with brakes all weekend long. We saw that with a couple of cars, Paul. Yeah, very strange for Simon Pagino. He had the same trouble at Toronto, but he was able to rebound and get a win there. Mike Conway, a number struggling weekend. The guy has won multiple times on road courses, but a bad start. Montoya frustrated yesterday with the penalty. He's near the back, and at the back of the field is Sebastian Saavedra. When you have a frustrated Juan Pablo Montoya, look out. We'll have great shots from you, for you from outside the car, on boards as well here. There's a look at Will Power and our Chevy on board, Verizon streaming. Remember to download the IndyCar 14 app by visiting verizon.com slash IndyCar, the App Store or Google Play. Verizon and IndyCar driving technology. On board with Simon Pagano and the Lucas Oil on board. He wants to move forward. Now back with Graham Rahal in the National Guard sponsored car. Graham with an up and down season. He's run well at times and struggled in other at other racetracks, Elio Castro Neves, our Verizon on board. You know, he's thinking championship, and Ryan Briscoe, who's improved all year long in the NTT data, on board. And then James Hinchcliffe, we said he has shown great resurgence here as of late. I know he's frustrated with the middle part of his season. United Fiber and Data, and then Will Power, we talked about riding with him on the Verizon streaming on board. Will Power on the pole again. He did exactly what he needed to do, but is he going to do what he needs to do at the start? It'll be interesting to see. Let's check in with Robin Miller. All right, you guys know him as Rick Mears, four-time I know him as driver, coach, confessor, team strategist, psychiatrist. You've been with Elio Castner for 15 years, Rick, and you've been with Will six years. Do you feel for any of do you want? Are you pulling for either one of them to win the championship? Well, obviously, you know, today I was spotting for Elio and, and you know, It'd be great to see him get the championship, but I, I can't be too biased. I've got to be with all three guys, and uh, you know I think all three Team Penske cars are very good today, good race cars, and uh, it's going to be a tough day. I mean, it's going to be tough to pass. Uh, guys going to have to work hard, and strategy is going to play a big part today. All right, thanks, Rocket.
Brian. And the first part of the strategy is going to be played right here at the start. Will Power on pole. Joseph Newgarden outside the front row. Newgarden wants a win desperately. Power wants a championship. He gets the jump and heads into turn one. That is good news for Will Power. But they, they're they going to uh, bunch up behind, and there's the first problem. Wow, that's a big pile up, almost a track blockage there. Will really got the jump on the start, and it looked like Newgarden just wanted to slot in. And that kind of bottlenecked the field coming up the hill, and then it was everybody into each other. But it looks like they might not go yellow on this one. Hitchcliffe involved in that, as was Sebastian Bourdais. We talked about a resurgent for James Hitchcliffe with a good qualifying effort here. But a problem at the start has set him well back. It'll be interesting to see if he has damage. Will Power still in the lead. Castro Neves made it through. But and cost that is him important. a lot of positions. Yeah, it did. It really dropped him back through. And he's got damage. Front wing is damaged on Castro Neves' car. And full course caution is out. And that's what we talk about at these starts. You've got to be, and, and it's almost like going back to the beginning formula, Sam, isn't it? You, you can't win a race in the first turn, but you can certainly lose it. And it doesn't matter at what level you race. It seems like these guys forget about it from time to time. Let's take some looks. I was definitely surprised about how much Newgarden was able to, to kind of hold back and to slot himself in. It, it really looks like there was some contact maybe between Bourdais and Briscoe right there getting going. Elio with a lot of damage getting spun around there. There were so many things going on. That's a, a corner where you go from being able to about three or four wide to all the way down to one. Yeah, and really you just... You almost got to start breaking at the bridge as you go up the hill. Everybody's rushing up there, trying to get a spot. Briscoe's off there in the grass with Bourdais. Everybody's trying to make a position or two. Here's Helio Castroneves. as you can see. He's on the brakes, he's on the brakes. Somebody touches him, and then he's into the back of another car sideways. Another car's into him, so just a total melee. I think it's Sebastian Bourdais in his black and green car that comes up the inside, loses it a little bit. This is on board with James Hinchcliffe. Problem really kind of goes on behind him, but he gets yeah, hit. He got clobbered from yeah, behind. And, and there, I believe... Castro Neves got into the side of him and got That's what lane. happened to his front wing. Last angle. A pretty big hit for Castro Neves on the front suspension, so be surprised if that doesn't damage, hasn't damaged a tow link or, or something on the car. And it can go away that quickly in the Verizon IndyCar Series. We've seen it happen for Elio Castro Neves before and for Will Power before. Power out in front right now, but the problem for Bourdais quickly turned into a problem for Ryan Briscoe, Elio Castro yeah, Neves, and James Hinchcliffe. Understand he's going to come in for a front wing. He's going to have to. They need to I mean, get... I you guys know what happened, I just... Uh, and you can hear the radio communication. The front wing on the left, missing the in plate, the second dive plane. As we see on Castro Neves' car, this front wing right here is broken, and they are going to replace the whole nose cone section and replace that whole thing. So it'll be a quick change. He might have an opportunity to go off strategy here and do something different. So even though this has been a bad situation for him, it does give him the opportunity to go off strategy now. And what you mean by that is making pit stops at other times other than when the leaders are. And so you never know how things are going to play out with yellows. You just may roll the dice and find yourself in a good position for that last fuel stint. And the big benefactor from this was the guy who was really upset with qualifying yesterday, Hunter Ray. He jumped from 11th to 4th. So he's in good position. Kanan's in good position. Andretti was way back, is now in good position. And so a lot of guys benefit got through this accident unscathed, but definitely not the way Castro Neves wanted to start his weekend. And you see Ryan Hunter Ray there in the yellow DHL entry, the number 28. He felt like he had a good car, but they made a radical change for qualifying to gamble and see if they could improve, and they didn't. They went the wrong direction, so they've gone back on that setup to something that they know works a little bit better. He worked his way through, and now he's sitting pretty in yeah. fourth with still, only two laps in the book. Still fighting for that championship. He's still in the picture. He has to win, so down to Kevin. Elio said that everything else is okay with the cars. We see Juan Pablo Montoya coming by on pit lane, so they're changing the front wing. They went ahead and changed the tires, although Elio said the tires are okay, so they may go back to those quicker fire zone alternates. They go ahead and top him up with fuel, and Castro Neves is back out. Don't give him any room there. Don't give him any room. You hear him on the radio. Don't give him any room. Nobody wants Epic. to give up an inch here. 
So cars heading back on track here at Sonoma. Already excitement. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by GoPro, the world's most versatile camera. GoPro, be a hero. You see work going on during that full course caution, and a new front wing going on, Sebastian Bourdais, number 11, as he heads back on track, and some tire marks down the side. So tight there at the start, and you knew that it would really compress up in turn two, because everybody trying to hold on positions, maybe make a position or two up there, and a lot of times when you've got that heavy braking at the end of a fast run after a start, you'll get that compression and you'll have problems. But sometimes you get to dodge the bullet. Graham Rahal, you're right on board with him right now, did just that. Yeah, nice start for Graham. He's moved up quite a few positions from where he was started. But you can see here he just kind of picked his way Excuse all me. the way Excuse through me. this Pardon whole me. thing. Oh, 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 oh come here I come. I'm coming through. So. Pretty slick driving there. It's tough to find your way through a hole, especially with these cars. They don't turn and move around that well. When you saw the dust, it's I hate to make the analogy back to the days of Thunder, <laughs> but it's almost like you just point it into a hole and go and hope you're going to make it through. A lot of the times that's what you get when people will see that dust and they'll be more focused on, on you know, that dust and what they are of trying to get through it. And you can't just drive through it. you got to slow down, figure out your holes, because what there's a lot more to lose than there is to gain oh, yeah. by trying to get through there too fast. Absolutely. Turn 11, cars streaming through and back onto the front straightaway. The safety car is in, and Will Power is on the point now. Joseph Newgarden, who was pretty relaxed at the start and couldn't keep up with Will Power. Let's see what he can do here. And we've got side-by-side -side up into turn two again. You know there's going to be a stack up. Strong move by Kanan on the outside of, of Hunter Ray there. That was a real good restart by Kanan. Uh, he's moved up a bunch of positions now, chasing his teammate. Scott Dixon, as Will Power, starts to stretch his legs now. Tony Kanaan, fourth in the serial, in that number 10 entry from target Chip Ganassi. That car belonged to Dario Franchitti, his very good friend, and he wants to win before season's end. He's been spectacular with his consistency. He's just missed the top step of the podium. He'd gotten past the number yellow, or the yellow number 28 of Ryan Hunter Ray, fifth in the serial right there. But uh, those two guys trying to charge forward, and Joseph Newgarden in his White and blue 67, trying to hold on to the back of Ryan Hunter Ray, but Hunter Ray running away. As we see the cars all come out of the tight hairpin into the S's, this is wide open through here. They get down to this really slow first gear chicane. This is another spot where you can find a lot of trouble. It's been so dry here, they haven't had any rain in almost 118 days, so there's no grass. All the grass is gone around here. You, if you get offline, you're in the rocks and the dirt. So easy to get off and, and cut a tire down. The fellas, Joseph Newgarden riding in second. Fresh contract in hand. He signed it last night to stay with us 6017 for 2015. I asked him the strategy for the day. He said, listen, Will Power is so good at this place. And where he's really good is on old tires. My goal, don't let him get too far away from me. I just want him to be in sight all day long. I keep him there. I'm in good shape. Kevin. Scott Dixon off to a good start in this race, running in the third position after starting third. He said he's feeling much better today. He's been under the weather throughout the weekend, and it wasn't the car that was the problem in the early portions of practice. He said it was the driver, maybe not focused enough, just simply not getting the most out of his abilities. But he said he felt a little bit better today. Might be more just the case it's race day, focus a little bit more. He thinks he's got a good chance here today. Scott Dixon was fastest in the final warm-up this morning. Question is, could Mike Conway have a good shot today because he has moved up all the way to eight. There's Mike Conway in the number 20, the Fuzzies Vodka entry from Ed Carpenter Racing. And he's been so strong on the road courses, hasn't run the oval this year, but he is our GoPro biggest mover. And you think about somebody who specializes in road courses a couple of years ago, you'd say, where could he find a job? But he certainly found a home at Ed Carpenter Racing. Kelly? And it's really been a great fit for him already. He's had two wins on this limited schedule of running just the road courses. His best finish here at Sonoma was third. That was back in 2009. The last couple times out here, he's struggled a bit. He told me, I just don't get it. I love this track. I love coming here, and I feel like we have a strong car, but it hasn't shown in results as of late. 
but now he's got to be very positive after this brilliant start. He's gained nine positions in these opening laps. Well, there's that comfortable word. Sam, you were talking about it yesterday in qualifying. If you're comfortable here at Sonoma, you may not be going fast enough. Well, you definitely have to go out there and push the car as close as you can to the limit, but early on in the going here, um, to be able to navigate his way through that accident there at the beginning and just to get into that, that comfort zone of being able to, to feel good about where the car is at, the handling of it. Elio Castroneves back on board with him. You can see that the new wing has been put on the front. The question is, that front suspension, it may not be bent, Paul, but if it's not just quite right, you may be off a couple of tenths, and that won't get the job done. Oh, for sure. And right now, what he's got to try to do is make really good fuel mileage. He's got a couple of tough guys in front of him with Pagano. He's not going to lay down and move over for Castroneves to move through the field. As we see Hawksworth turn into the chicane, and Pagano going through the chicane. He's got some tough cars in front of him here. Montoya has kind of skipped away and got a couple of positions in front of him. So it's never easy to get by anybody as we see. Oh. Pagano took a look on the inside and then he did the over under on him, but he's gonna be on the outside here, which is a tough pass to pull off. And Jack Hawksworth slides a little bit wide. Simon Pagano in that orange 77 right behind, struggling with brake problems all weekend long. And when you don't have that confidence in the brakes, it's hard to pass around this racetrack because that's really where you're gonna get the job done. No matter where you're at, if you have to <laughs> use the brakes to be able to pass because you're really going into these corners and you're pushing it to 100% of what the braking uh, capability is. And when you get down in those corners underneath somebody, it, it's very easy to already be a little bit out of control with the amount of brake that you have. And if you've already been worried about exactly where the rear end is gonna be, are you gonna be able to turn in the corner like you want to? It, it's something that you definitely will fight and it'll be in the back of your mind even if you go through 84 of these laps without a problem, it's still in the back of your mind when you get to 85 if you're trying to make a pass. And he's on the black, Sam, so this is not the preferred tire. So these uh, Helio is, uh, we hear on the radio that he could be coming back to the pits, so maybe there is still a recurring problem with the car. It's such disappointment when we talk about how quickly things can change. They change there at the start, and if he's got a problem, You'd really love to take care of it under caution. They were able to do that with the nose box and they didn't lose a lap. But if it's any kind of work that will take any kind of time here yep. under green, here he comes. he's yeah, in danger of losing right. a lap. And he could lose a lap. If he has a problem where they have to fix something, maybe a, a slightly bent tie rod or something. Kevin, let's see what you've got down there. Well, it's been an awful start to this race as Elio Castroneves tries to drive towards his first championship. Caught up in the first accident and had to change the front wing. Now I'm hearing it's the rear pod Four, that they're going to cut something three, away. So we're going to watch and see yellow. what they do as Roger Penske counts him down. Let's take a look at the rear it's part of the car. They're going to go ahead and change tires first, and then we can see them cutting on the right rear of the car back there. So they're going to cut off some of that protective pod, and this is going to be a costly stop under green. Castro Neves is going to need a lot of things to work out in his favor. Now he's on sticker reds and back away. So the championship maybe has already taken a big turn. Will Power came in 40 points up, and he's in charge in the early going here at Sonoma on NBCSN. Will Power leading and this is the 10th race that he's led all season long and that is more than anyone and guys you have to wonder if you're tim Sendrick and your willpower you clearly know what's going on with your teammate who is way back in the field now and in last position for elio castro neves do you call this race differently do you play it a little more conservative you can see the championship speed points right now 85 for willpower if he went into fontana with that sort of a lead it would be his championship obviously to lose guys but how do you play this race if you're willpower and you're tim Sendrick right now do you play it a little more conservative paul tracy or do you still just go for the win i don't know marty i think i gotta disagree with you on this i think will power is the type of driver and his driving mentality is that you've got to just let him run his race and let him do his thing. I think if you try to change uh, the plan on him, it could backfire. So he's in the zone, keep him in the zone. Don't tell him to back down and just let him do his thing. Sam? I don't feel like he needs to take any chances, but on the, on the same token, it's exactly what Paul's talking about. He knows where the edge is with the car. He needs to push it close to that 
this game of, is a game of inches, really, and what you do when you're making these pit stops, uh, you're coming out under green. I know we haven't made it all the way to pit stops yet, but if he pedals it back, you know, a half a second could mean the difference of making it into the pit box or, or not before the pits close for a yellow. There's a lot of implications on how you run your race. So as long as he knows where Elio is at, you know, just tell him to go out there, run your own race, and, uh, you know, don't take too many chances. You know, just take care of the car is the big thing. And we still have a long way to go. 85 laps in this event. Only 12 of them are in the books. And, and it's not over for Castro Neves because even if Will Power runs his race, runs strong, as he works his way through lap traffic, there's literally danger around every corner. Well, most certainly, uh, Brian, you know, in the years past, this is where Will broke his back here. He was, you know, running well, and he uh, came over the hill, and there was a car spun right in the track in front of him. So certainly not out of the woods yet. This championship is still wide open. Former winner coming on to, uh, onto the screen here. Yeah, Marco Andretti hasn't been running well as of late, but there he is in his yellow and blue Snapple entry from Andretti Autosport. And uh, he's one of the good movers and one of the beneficiaries of the problem there in turn two. So Andretti moving up. It's good to see he didn't qualify at all where he wanted to. Very unhappy with that. Up to seventh right now. And now James Hinchcliffe has come to pit road. And he's one of those that was caught up in that first lap melee, but he didn't su suffer any visual damage. They didn't change anything on the car, but when he went back out, he said the car was really loose, so maybe a byproduct of that. Takuma Sato was also in and out. He had damage on the beginning of the race. They had to change the front wing. Also, some tires were punctured. Sato back in, and they took a half turn of front wing on this stop. Stay low. Stay low. Now that, you're clear. Now you're clear. It is so close coming out of the pit lane there, but it's one of those places, Sam, that when you exit the pit lane, you really can't worry about anybody else. If you're on cold tires, you've got to hold your line and go. You're on the racetrack. It's time to go racing again. Well, you're doing everything that you can do to get up to speed to not try to lose any spots there. And the guy that's actually out on the racetrack coming around the corner, all you see for a very long time is there the pit lane, and you're closing at probably almost 100 miles an hour faster when you get to the point where you can see somebody, and they're exactly where you want to be online. It's a very difficult. I've been really impressed with what Hunter A has been able to do. Um, got a good start to the race. He's still on the black tires, so he's getting his black tire run out of the way early here, and being the first guy to be on blacks, that, that gives him that opportunity that when he puts those red tires on that are going to be a little bit faster, he's going to be a little bit further up the grid. As we watch these two former teammates battle, I had a glass of wine last night. That's the first time I've really had an opportunity to catch up with Dario. We sat and talked, and I said to Dario, what's the difference with Kanan? He's out running his teammate. He's been quicker on the, on the road courses. He said, man, I've really got him tapped in and looking at my old telemetry, showing him where the time is in the break zones, and he's really been taking it all in, and he's really working well with his, his engineer now, and he's getting it all figured out. So he's really honed in, like Dario is now the Rick Mears, as he was to you, Sam. Well, that's a, that's a great point, and the good thing about having Rick Mears on your side, you got four uh, Indianapolis 500 wins, a lot of experience. Rick knew how to get the job done, not only uh, when it was a, a tough, tight situation, but also when he had a points lead. When you look at having the opportunity to have Dario out there, somebody that's just been in the car recently in the last couple of years, the success that he's had, that's an invaluable tool for uh, both of these guys, Dixon and Kanan to be able to use, but and to show Kanan really how the Ganassi program works. Ryan Hunter Ray in the yellow 28 Honda Power chasing down the Chevrolet of Tony Kanan. But what I'm impressed with, Ryan Hunter Ray on the black tires. That's the primary tire, just not quite as quick, and it tends to fall off a little bit sooner. But now Pagano is on pit road. We documented his braking issues throughout the weekend. He's been really quiet on the radio so far. Haven't heard calling for any adjustments. And in fact, it was a very quick spot for Simon Pagano. He goes back out on reds. And once again, the alternate tire is the one that seems to stay a little bit more consistent for the drivers here at Sonoma. Will Power still leads, then Joseph Newgarden, Scott Dixon. Pagano working to get the Firestones up to temperature. How long does it take before they come good? Well, in qualifying, it takes about, you know, you basically run the car for about three corners and they're ready. So, but the pressures are up then. They'll be running lower pressures right now. So probably about a lap to a lap and a quarter before the pressures are up. Uh, you don't want to overshoot that pressure. So you start, start a little bit lower. 
on board with Will Power. Four of the last six IndyCar races from Sonoma have been won by the pole sitter. Is that good news for Will Power as he moves closer to his goal of champion? The area around Sonoma and Sonoma Raceway from high up above, and you can see the twists and turns, the elevation changes. San Francisco in the background. It's the GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma. In commercial, we saw four cars come in. Ryan Hunter Ray was one of them, Mike Conway as well, and now Will Power comes to pit road. Marty. And guys, an impressive stint for Will sure, Power. Marshall Believe it or not, Penske here. trying to, the, for the first time ever, to sweep a racing weekend. They won the nationwide race with Ryan Blaney. The Cup Maybe race last night with Jerry Lagano. Will Power trying to get the win at Sonoma. No changes. You see those scuff red tires going on for Will Power. Kevin? Marty Scott Dixon is going from the alternate Firestones to another set of alternate Firestones. These are a scuff set. That's a really blisteringly quick stop for Scott Dixon. Mike Toll told him, take advantage. You need to make up some time here, Marty. You see the front part of pit road tony canon his teammate pitting he said the car just will not turn front or rear that is scuffed red tires going on the alternate tires for tony canon same tower he ran in the first stint a little bit of traffic <laughs> as wow. comes out and ryan hunter ray now on reds in front of him and ryan had the faster car even on the primary tire before he pitted and now he's had a lap on the red so you've got to think they're up to temperature he threaded the needle on that one he <laughs> certainly didn't give Kanan any room but Kanan's on cold tires now so he's got to be careful not to get attacked by wilson but uh obviously some handling trouble a slight change on the front wing which cost a little bit of time which allowed Hunter Ray to jump ahead of him on the pit stop. But you want that balance back, so you'll take that adjustment. And Sam, those in and out laps on the tires, so critical as we see Joseph Newgarden now head to pit road. It's very important to be able to get in and out of the pits with the utmost speed that you can because it can be so difficult to come here and to be able to pass. So when you can make it up on pit road, when your pit crew gives you really good stops, that's what it's all about. It makes the driver's job a lot more easy. Long run for Newgarden to his spot. We'll take a look and keep an eye on where Will Power is. And guys, he ran second that entire stint. Will Power goes by him on the racetrack. Joseph Newgarden on pit road. They're going to go with primary tires for Joseph Newgarden. Sticker primary tires. He had understeer. They made a wing and also an air pressure adjustment. Interesting, guys, because if they're going to make it on three stops, this is very early in the window for all of these cars. So they have to make a little bit of fuel mileage here to make it on three stops. And that super fast pit stop by the target team uh, has allowed Dixon to now get ahead of, uh, of Joseph. So the fight for Joseph to keep Will Power in his mirror, now he's got Dixon in, in front of him. And as we see Dixon, he's also no stranger to winning at this track. That's one of the things that's difficult about planning out your strategy um, as far as these strategists are concerned about if you go a little bit further on a set of tires, try to get yourself in a better fuel window to be able to go a little bit further down the road, you always risk what your tires have worn out and what another guy is able to make up on you by having another lap or two of being out there on fresh tires and gaining time on them. Right now, Munoz leading in the number 34, Juan Pablo Montoya, right behind him just a couple of laps ago. This is down into 9A. Montoya with some lockup. And, and they've been on each other for the last several laps, and now Munoz on pit road. See the rookie, we see the rookie Carlos Munoz come into the pits. He'll take off those red tires. He started with putting on a pair of scuffed red tires. Also not, have not heard much out of that young Colombian. Seems to be pretty happy with the car. He said the season as a whole is rookie year has been pretty much up and down. He wished it was a little more consistent. He's got five top fives on the year. Also had five DNS, but overall he said he's pretty pleased with his performance this year. Well, he's had podiums. He had podium at Long Beach, one in Houston and one in Pocono. So he's done temporary circuits and a very high speed racetrack as well. So Carlos Munoz new tires. Fit this lap. shouldn't be go. too upset. You hear him say he's got new tires. Let him go. He was talking to Juan Pablo Montoya. And that's the communication between the teams of uh, both Juan Pablo Montoya and Will Power coming up into turn one on this lap. Will Power said, little help here with my teammate who he thought would move over a little quicker for him. Then you heard Montoya say, is he on new tires or something? Why should I move over for him? But this lap anyway, Montoya is going to pick. Guys, he's at the very end of his cycle and he did indeed move over for his teammate Will Power as we saw. I'll tell you what, Marty, if it wasn't his teammate, 
<laughs> he would not let him over, let him by and go to, go a lap down. Certainly Montoya would never let anybody go by. We know that from his cup career. So. Sam threw his hands up in the air anyway. <laughs> well, well, even with where he let him by, you're coming in this lap. What's the harm of keeping him behind you for another 10 seconds? The amount of time that Montoya lost by letting him go there was probably in the neighborhood of five or six seconds. That's going to mean a lot when he comes back out on the track after this pit stop as far as where he's going to cycle through. I think you're a very giving Two, man there, Sam. One, Marty? He was willing to give up the five seconds to help his teammate. He comes to pit road. They all put on sticker alternate tires for Juan Pablo Montoya, who's had a pretty quick car. You saw the issue trying to get around Carlos Munoz earlier in turn seven. Even after that, they said your pace pretty good. So they're going out with these sticker tires. We'll see where he cycles back out, guys. Sam Hornish Jr. Doesn't speak a whole lot, but he speaks a lot with his hands in the booth. We need to have a booth cam in here so you can see him throw his hands up in the air and thumbs down on this, that, and the other. So certainly have an opinion as what's going on and how you treat your teammates. There's Ryan Hunter, right? Well, that's probably why I, Elio always thought I raced him too hard. You know, you go out there and you're, you're running hard against your teammates, and obviously Montoya's having a rough day with uh, you know all the things that have happened to him so far. But he's still running his own race, and Will's got an eight-second lead over top of second place. So it's not as if he was you know coming up about to get ready to get past. Justin Wilson and Marco Andretti having a battle of it, and there's Graham Rahal in the number 15, the National Guard car, and Ryan Hunter Ray right behind him. Ryan Hunter Ray has burned one of his push to pass. Graham Rayall still has we're 10. Losing a bunch of time, yeah. I'm say we're losing a bunch of time here. Ryan Hunter Ray around the outside. Is it going to get done? Yeah, no. We're not losing time. You're doing great. Bobby Rayall saying, no, you're doing great. Keep focused. Stay yeah. ahead. Brian, he's, uh, he's not happy with the car and he thinks he's struggling, but his dad thinks he's doing great. So obviously he's uh, hanging on here. And we in, talked a good, in a good position, he's running fourth, so he's just got to try to maintain this. He's on a different strategy, so you got to play this card and ride it as long as you can. We talked a lot about this over the last couple of days, about between the ears, that, that guy sitting on the box can really help you if he's a good counselor, and if you believe it. I mean, sometimes it's hard to listen to your dad. I know <laughs> I had a hard time listening to my dad, and I think that's one of the struggles that's going on there as we go to Kevin. Elio Castroneves, this is his third stop already. He can maybe see the championship slipping away right now. Stop number three, the last time was on lap 10, so trying some different strategy at this point to try to make something happen. I think, All clear. I think if they keep pitting Sam, they're going to run out of tires. They've been <laughs> in three times already to, uh, to Will Powers one. Well, that's that's, at some point, you're going to run out of red steams. Well, you know, you only had a couple corners on that first set, but you wonder with that rear pod on whether or not it got pushed up into the rear tire. Did it make any marks in it? But, uh, you know, the amount of time that he's losing by keeping uh, pitting there, you just definitely keep putting yourself behind the eight ball, but they definitely must have a reason for doing it. And guys, a moment ago, Tony Kanan came on the radio, said the car just lost all power, but now he's back up to speed. So the team a, a little concerned, don't even know exactly what happened since then. He's not said a word. So all good for Tony Kanan hanging in there in the top 10. We'll be back from Sonoma in just a moment. Will Power with the car out front. Scott Dixon hanging in in second. Talk about a clash. This one's been going for the last several laps. It's Ryan Hunter Ray trying to get past the National Guard car of Graham Rahal. And Rahal feeling like his car's not running that well, but he's doing a good job. He's, he's up and forth. He's really pushing off the hairpin. Another good battle here with Hawksworth and Montoya. But it looks like uh, that Rahal's car has a lot of push in the hairpin, and he's able to hold uh, Hunter Ray at bay as we see Montoya in turn two as he has moved away. But we're back to Rahal. Uh, he's able to clear Hunter Ray and, and keep a distance here uh, through most of the track, but it looks, Sam, like he's really struggling in the hairpin. It's like it, it just pushes real bad, and he can't get back to power. Well, that's about six to go, Graham. Six to go. Let's dig in. Well, and you hear that call, six to go for Graham Ray Hall, and Michael Andretti's come over the radio to Ryan Hunter Ray telling him just that, look, Graham is going to pit before you, so don't push too hard. Say some of that fuel so when you get around him, then you can go after and attack uh, Joseph Newgarden, who's ahead of him in third place. That, that's one of the things that you really have to look at when you're 
out there on the older tires is when you're braking and you're turning, the, the tighter the corners are, the more you have to brake, the more you have to get back to the throttle heart. Those old tires are holding you back a little bit. So that's why I think when you get to more of the open corners where you're able to roll through them with more speed and you don't have to have as much lock in it or get back to the throttle as hard coming off the corner, it gives you that opportunity to be able to pull away a little bit. Good point. Ryan Hunter right now looks up the inside, heading up into two, <laughs> nothing doing there. You've got to have a good head of steam there, Paul, to get that job done. Yeah, that's uh, that's single line up the hill. It's incredible. This is my first time here, really, in 30 years, and I've forgotten how steep that run is up through turn one and two, two. It's it's uh, it's like going reverse order up the corkscrew at, at uh, <laughs> Laguna Seca. It's so steep. So uh, as we see Graham, he's got pulled away again. Uh, you know, he's pulled a little gap as he, as he got through the middle section of the track as we see Briscoe coming into the pits to Marty. And guys, it's just been a rough day for Ryan Briscoe, who had a fantastic starting spot today in the fifth position, fell all the way back to the very last spot after that first lap incident, turn one. They're going to put tires on here, give him another turn of wing. That's three turns of wing, and he has a major push in that car. They did two on the last stop, one on this stop, just trying to make something out of this day at what is one of his best racetracks. Not going to be a good day, though, for Ryan Briscoe. No, and Ryan Briscoe came in here he is so incredibly consistent, one of only three drivers that has no DNFs on the season. It was just kind of a hallmark as to what his season's been like. He's run well at times, but just hadn't gotten the finishes, and the team doing better and better through the second half of the season. But another bad luck day for Ryan Briscoe, and this battle continuing right now as Ryan hunter Ray tries to remain patient. You know he wants past Graham Rahal. And they're not losing a ton of ground to Newgarden. He's just just up the road there, still in Ray Hall's sight. So it's not like Hunter Ray is losing a ton of track track position to, to Newgarden to try to get him by the next stop. I, I, I think once you see Ray Hall peel off for the pits, I would assume that in five laps, as we see Power has a huge lead over Dixon right here. And then Dixon has, has a huge lead over Newgarden. But here comes Ray Hall in the background, so. Uh, I think Hunter Ray, once he gets by Ray Hall, when he peels off, I think he'll close that gap to Newgarden. I'll tell you what, though, when you look at the lead that Graham Ray Hall had out of turn six, a very fast downhill left-hand corner, it's almost like perhaps Graham's car works a little bit better in that high-speed section of the racetrack. Ryan Hunter Ray a little bit better off the low-speed corners. Here comes one right now in turn 9A and B. Hunter Ray pulls up right behind it. Like you were saying earlier, Sam, those low speed corners is where those worn tires are really going to show. You can't get the car turned. You can't get the power down. Well, yeah, definitely. That's one of the things that you're going to continue oh. to fight in that, that grip there. Uh, Hunter Ray is not giving up. But as a race car driver, when you get out there and you get Good behind job, somebody Graham. that you Good feel job. is definitely you know slowing you down, it's not quite giving you what you need, uh, the, the room. You know, he's wishing he had a teammate ahead of him right now so he could get a little bit of help out there and you know, go after these guys. And Ryan hunter Ray only has so many good laps on that set of tire before they settle down. So this fight continues to rage up front, but we've got a long way to go from Sonoma. It's round 17 of 18 of the 2014 IndyCar season. Problems here at Sonoma Raceway for the number 18. You see him off course. This could bring out a full course caution as Carlos Huertas, and indeed it does, Pulls off to the side. Huertas, who won at Houston, not having the day he wanted to have here, and the car now beginning to roll as he started to climb out. you got to make sure it's still in gear. So that's just before turn six, the diving left-hand sweeper that leads onto the drag strip portion of the racetrack here. That's a super fast corner, so obviously he had a problem where he couldn't get any further off the road. So uh, if a car was to ever get off the road there, that's a bad spot for a car to be sitting. So. He'll just tuck that behind the tire barrier there, and, and this will change up the strategies. The guys that have already pitted, uh, this really helps Graham Rahal because he was going to pit. Now yeah. now uh, he's in the position where he's going to be able to pit with all the leaders. You can see on the map where the number 18 block is, showing you on the racetrack in turn six, and Carlos Huertas looking at the back of the car. Perhaps it lost drive, but he's looking at the back, and he's his day is done disappointing for him the last several races have not been good but he did have that great run in houston under difficult conditions to take a victory and as you said this changes strategy we talked earlier about elio castroneva as being in a lot and certainly he's down but he's not out you keep playing the cards you keep playing the cards and seeing if you can't get for move forward you never give up 
Not at all. You have to go out there and run it out. And you know, Elio's a, a positive type of person that's going to sit there and feel like, you know, it, yeah, we might be down, but uh, we got to do everything that we can do to try to position ourselves for further down the road. And they're one of the last cars to pit, so technically they can go the furthest on fuel from this point. There's a lot of opportunity for him. Um, if some of these other guys feel like it's, uh, you know, fits their window to be able to come in and pit, but you're going to see a mixed uh, bag. But we talked about Ray Hall and how close they were to being able to go out there and, and to pit. And, you know, this would have been a golden opportunity that, for them to have snuck onto pit road and be able to, to go a little bit further if they could have caught it at the right time. Will Power, Scott Dixon, Joseph Newgarden, then Graham Ray Hall. What a great move from his starting position. He didn't qualify nearly as well as he would have liked to. You want to start up front. He started 14th today but up and forth, and that's a great run for him. Oh, absolutely. This is exactly what he needed. He's had a, had a bit of a disaster season. He's had one podium, uh, but a good strategy, a good start by Graham, picking his way through all those spinning cars, and then great strategy by his dad, and now he's in position where he might be able to pull off a podium here. And he had a good run at Mid-Ohio, so a, a similar type racetrack in that it's flowing with elevation changes and such, so perhaps that National Guard team has just a better idea of setups for the permanent road courses and struggle a little bit on ovals and some of the street circuits throughout the year, but they've worked hard to try to improve their setups all around. Being told the fuel light might be on on Graham Roy Hall's car, Kevin. It is. They were prepared to come in. The tires were out. When the caution came out, they said, no, no, stay out, pack up, come in. Bobby Ray, I'll just told Graham, this works great into our strategy. But they need to get in ASAP. Well, and it couldn't have happened at a better time. Yeah. Well, the only drawback to this is he yeah, we're does... We're doing a great race here. You're right with the leaders now. He does have a little bit more fuel to put we're in the tank than the other guys, so he's going to go to Blacks, as his dad just said, but they do probably have to put about four to five more gallons in the car than the other guys, so could be a little bit costly on the stop. Might cost him a position or two, but uh, if they can pull off a fast one, maybe even short fill, keep him in position. And wow, the other guys didn't pit. That's a surprise. Cars breaking off. There's Graham. Graham Rahal, Tony Kanan also coming to pit road. So when Rahal goes to the primary tire, he's going to lose a little bit of speed, but still it seems to have had a good car underneath him. And as they head down pit road, we'll go to Kevin. So a lot of different teams had tires out, but they elected not to pit. They were waiting to see what the leaders do. Tony Kanan coming in, rolling past. There's Graham Rahal with the National Guard team coming in and making the change. They have to take a little more fuel, but still works into their strategy, Marty. Kevin, the call very on, early on for Tony Kanan and his team was to come in and do the opposite of what Will Power did. You see those primary sticker tires going on for Tony Kanan, so whatever Will Power didn't do, that's what they were going to do, doing everything they can to get themselves all sequenced with Will Power and give themselves a shot to win this race. Mike Conway also on pit road. So was Takuma Sato and Tony Kanan leapfrogs Graham Rahal in pit lane, Rahal having to take just a little bit more fuel, but it's Will Power who stays out in front. A championship on the line, and he is exactly where he needs to be. We'll see where he is when we leave Sonoma. A lot of hospitality here at Sonoma Raceway. There's a look at the target hospitality. Had to go get PT out of there to get him to the booth so he could call it. He was having a sandwich before we got going, but you can tell that weather is absolutely perfect. And as I said earlier, our thoughts are with the people down in Napa after the earthquake this morning, but still fans filling the area here at Sonoma Raceway. And there's GoPro hospitality. Lots of fun here at Sonoma Raceway. And you look around, wouldn't you want to be here? We're lucky that we are. Weather absolutely spectacular. And the race for Will Power has been a good one. There are other drivers in the field who have moved up. We talked about how Graham Rahal had had a good run. He dodged that problem at the start. And right now, the field behind the safety car. Let's check with Marty in pit lane. Well, fellas, here's a strategy for Will Power and Tim Sendrick. They just talked about it on the radio. Will said, why did we not pit there? And the reason is because we're about seven to eight laps from their window for the next pit stop. So you see Tim Sendrick making the calls there on the screen. So they'll run about seven, eight laps here under green, try and gap the field as much as they can. And then you'll see a lot of those guys up front, Will Power, Joseph Newgarden, Scott Dixon, all those guys will then come to pit road when that window opens up in a few laps. What's interesting, it, it, you play that strategy the way you need to. We talked about 
the different drivers who were moving up and having good days. Well, Marco Andretti having a good day. He started in 13th. He is our Mazda's driver profile today. This is at Sonoma, his stats here. Starts nine, one win back in 2006. Average finish 13.8, 34 laps led. And he played it well, and he played it really well in 2006. It took a little fuel strategy and some good luck, but Marco Andretti, Back in August of 2006, sees those double checkered flags that every IndyCar driver wants to see. I'm not sure who was more excited, Marco, Michael, or Mario there on the right, but a great day here in Sonoma. Still cleaning up the racetrack, getting it ready to race on again. 33 laps of 85 in the books. The Verizon IndyCar Series from California and Sonoma will be back. Why do People love to come to San Francisco and Northern California. Just look at some of the scenes. Lombard Street there, the Golden Gate Bridge. Ramsgate Winery just outside the gates here at Sonoma Raceway and NBCSN. Thrilled to be here for the Verizon IndyCar Series. Look at the crowd. Everyone parked up on the hill. Somebody else thrilled to be here? Robin Miller. You know, Brian, I did a story today about the schedule for next year, and it doesn't have the dates with it, but I think we're going to lose Houston. We're going to gain New Orleans probably going to gain Dubai, probably going to gain a race in Brazil. Now, what happens to Toronto? That seems to be the really big key right now. They were offered a date. It was the same date Eddie Gossage got for Texas. He's going to get that date. So either they're going to try and find another date in Toronto that doesn't conflict with the Pan Am games, or they might move to Mossport. IndyCar went to Mossport last week. Tony Cotman checked out the track to see if any cars were too fast to run there. He says it's going to take some repairs. It's going to take some more guardrails, but it's possible. They've also looked at Montre Blanc, which used to be Sainz OV. USAC ran there back in the 60s. It's a pretty cool race course, but it's 50 miles north of, of Montreal. The other thing is, what about Houston? There's no Houston next year. There might be a Houston in 2016. It might be an airport course. And about the season, what about the season finale next year? Is it going to be New Orleans? Could it be here at Sonoma? Will it go back to Fontana? A lot of questions to be answered. But I, I'll just say this, Brian, it's probably going to be 18 or 19 races. Well, and if you go to Mosport, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, Paul Tracy's pulling out his driver's suit and his helmet. He's yeah, going to go run. Yeah, my, uh, my home track growing up, not far from where, where I lived. Ultra-fast race courses. We're getting ready to go green here, Brian, so you can lead it to us. And Ron Fellows and the guys up there at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park have done a great job with that racetrack. It'd be cool to see. What's going to be cool to see here is can Scott Dixon do anything with Will Power right in front? Both of them on the alternates, on the red tires. We're green again at Sonoma. Joseph Newgarden holding there in third. Ryan hunter Ray in his yellow livery. Andretti Autosport car up the hill in the drop of the green flag will power every time just absolutely spectacular i think he used another push to pass there when the green came out and just leaps out in front of everyone else now think about this sam these guys had a rough night last night will power got evacuated out of his hotel room i know dixon was in the same hotel as me and we got we got waking up at 3 30 in the morning but we didn't have to get out of our room so really good driving by will with no sleep on his hands the yeah, drivers are pretty much creatures of habit you know they know going into the day exactly hunter what they do hunter ray you know, making a nice pass there new guard using his black tires getting that out of the way simon pagino had gotten inside juan montoya and now contact it looks like sebastian Saavedra and I think maybe Bourdais involved in that as well. We saw Bourdais involved at the start, but Saavedra now with a problem missing part of his right front wing. And this is the issue of this yellow. The yellows breed yep. yellows, and this could pan out if it does, it, as it just goes yellow now, this is really, oh. I'm Pit coming, I'm, I'm coming, I'm not, I'm coming, I'm not. Let's but go, this, this, that's cost Seb Pagano a lot of positions. He was gonna come to the pits, and then they said, no, don't come in, it's yellow, you can't come in. So that cost him a bunch of positions, but as these guys now have to go out and circulate around, Sorry, they might mate. pit, I, uh, and that would we put Graham Rahal in the lead and, right and, and uh, Tony Kanon, who have already pitted. Well, that definitely is a great break for Graham Rahal to get himself into the window to be able to probably make it to the end now with one more stop. And all these other guys, you know, having that opportunity to leapfrog them, great, uh, great, great for him. You heard some of the radio traffic saying, sorry, mate, I, I called you in, but then they, they called it right as I was telling you to come in. So when the full course caution came out, they couldn't do it. You see 
car diving to pit road and then no you got to turn back across the racetrack that was yeah, that, Justin Wilson, that I believe, Justin and then Wilson Simon Pagano. And Simon, he got the he got the call late to get back on track and was really far out. Almost went, almost went to the NASCAR hairpin <laughs> to get turned around. Right, let's go back to the incident and see if we can figure out exactly what happens here. Saavedra in the red and yellow car to the top of the screen, and then Bourdais and in the Elio. middle. Yeah, it looks like. Bourdais just got a little bit shoved out wide, and he got into his teammate by Castro yeah. Neves, and then. Saavedra spun around into Briscoe. I think Briscoe was involved, and that was that's just three into one doesn't work. Yeah. On board with Castro Neves. Three into that hairpin, it's really one car. This isn't going to work, as he just gave him a little shove to the side and kind of looked like Paul Tracy and Bourdais <laughs> all over again there, didn't it? Well, we'll have to wait and see if there's an argument afterwards, and you see Saavedra shaking his head as he has made his way back to pit road. But you look at that, and... Desperate times call for desperate measures, but you can't throw it away by making a move like that. And for Castro Neves, maybe he didn't even see Saavedra was still hung out on the outside, but you can't put three into that yeah, corner. Yeah, it's, it's been a disastrous day for Castro Neves. He's had all kinds of problems and now maybe even more damage to have to come back. And this to is one of the court. tracks where you actually have that opportunity to have a spotter that can see everything. So he probably thinks that I'm on the inside of three wide here. His spotter should tell him that you're three wide getting in the corner. See the leaders coming to pit road. Let's go to Kelly. Ryan Hunter Ray, who was quickest in all practice sessions this weekend, looks to still have a strong car here for the race. He's going to go to some scuffed red tires. We saw him make that great move to get into third position. Kevin? Scott Nixon running in second, comes in. He's going to use this stint to go to his primary black firestones. He's going to try to race Will Power off the road, Marty. Kevin, this puts all the leaders in the window where they can make it on one more stop. Will Power's team drops to Jack. This is going to be close. Scott Dixon wins the race off pit road. Will Power tried to catch him, couldn't quite get it done. No adjustments for Power on that stop, but now he's going to be in a little bit of traffic. And for the first time today, we have a different leader here at Sonoma Raceway. Spectacular pit work is what has moved Dixon to the lead. New leader from Sonoma. This race far from over, and so is the 2014 Verizon IndyCar Championship. Tony Kanaan now out in front here at Sonoma on this full course caution. We just saw the leaders come to pit road. Will Power, Scott Dixon in there as well. Had a great race off of pit road last year, but the results were not nearly as good and a lot of controversy as well. Remember this? Well, last year, they were, this year, they're separated apart from each other as we see Just. Will Powers, guy who walked out of the box with the tire on his hip and collected that tire, Scott Dixon, and knocked both of these guys to the ground, but they were both okay and came back and did pit stops. But uh, there was questions of whether there was gamesman ships on the pit roads. They now have these dotted lines that the drivers, this is a safety zone that the, the crew has to stay inside of that and allow the other cars to get in that zone and out. So they've implemented a rule where that's a free zone for the coming in car and the going out car. Well, we have a lot of different strategies going on right now, and when we think of people who are best at figuring what to do, one of those we think of is Mike Hull, the managing director for Target Chip Ganassi on the Scott Dixon box. He just radioed to Scott. He said, there are so many different strategies right now. I don't know if I can really tell you what's going on. It's very <laughs> difficult to keep track of it. Well, I can understand why, and when Mike Hull says that, you know it's complicated. The incident between the 3, the 11, and the 17, that's Castro Neves, Bourdais, and Saavedra under review right now. Tony Kanan leads the field to the green. It'll be interesting to see what Will Power can do with Scott Dixon behind with the green flag waves. And look at Mike Conway. Conway to the inside of Dixon in that green and white fuzzies vodka entry from Ed Carpenter Racing. And with authority, he goes to the point. <laughs> and that was a power move like I have never seen. He has really been nowhere all weekend in practice. And any time you give Conway a sniff at a win, man, this guy just seizes the opportunity with Ed Carpenter's team. Exactly what I expected to see Newgarden do early on in the yeah. race, being the way he was talking before the race to how he's got to run his own way race. Conway was right up on Kanan's gearbox, and he knew exactly what he was going to do. And uh, I think that he caught him sleeping a little bit there. He's, che he's checked out on him. Let's check in with Kelly. On his own strategy during that caution for Carlos Huertas, not this most recent one, he actually pitted three times, one to put on sticker reds, and he came in two other times. 
Oh, and now we've got a spin out, but Mike Conway made three stops. And we have power spinning at the hairpin. We had a three car wide situation, another car spinning. No, so there's oil down there. That was just a, a spin by Munez in sympathy for what was going on in a front. A lot of smoke and power was trying to thread through there. A couple cars wide and just got on the power. It stepped out. And man, this race is just completely turned upside down. And this is where Tim Sindrick needs to calm his driver down. Everything's going his way. Castor Neves having problems. But power could have easily collected another car. A lot of traffic around you. Ride on board. That, that turbo came in and the boost came on and cold tires and, this and is it where just snapped around on him and away he went but now he's behind his teammate Castro Neves. Really what you see there that caused him to spin is that Newgarden starts to run on the outside of him there and makes him have to hold it very tight coming off the corner. He's got so much wheel lock into it when he gets there and that turbo kicks in just way too much wheel lock in there. And fellas, as you would predict, Tim Sindrick on the radio, he said, be cool here. Don't let this worry you too much. Obviously, they do have the best car here today, and they've proved it so far on the racetrack. And he's not let moments like this derail him so far in 2014. Remember the penalties at Texas? Remember Toronto? They came back and were able to finish podium in the second race there. They've recovered each time. We'll see how Will Power reacts now here at Sonoma. And I'll tell you what, Marty, with now he's on the blacks, and we know how quick these blacks go away and the rears particularly <laughs> go away. To do that gigantic spinning around burnout is very, very damaging to the tires. It can take, you know, almost a, a quarter of the life off the tire just doing that. He's kind of trying to work his way back up, but no action. Everything's been reviewed, but... Man, you, you got to think, you got to be more careful than that. You want to keep it running. You don't want to stall it. But as you were saying, Paul, all that wheel spin has cooked those tires. Had yeah, to. He's, he's gone from basically dominating the race from first to last. And he's not catching Saavedra. So, you know, he's not catching these group of cars in front of him. So Castro Neves has had a, a horrible day today. And now he's ahead of his teammate. You know, I, ta I talked about before the race of... Elio, all he's got to do is keep Will in his, you know, in his sights. Well, it's even better to have him in your mirrors if you look at it. <laughs> Good point, but you can see the last car in the train is Will Power, and he's not closing up on the cars in front. So I think you're right, Paul. I think the rears, the primaries, just could not take that kind of heat. It'd be fine if you're in a drifting competition, but not if you're in a Verizon IndyCar Series race. It's Conway out front, then Canon. Yeah. Brian, exactly like you're talking about there on those black tires, this strategy is very, very important to be able to try to uh, position yourself right. And if I'm calling a strategy, you would almost think that you'd want to get your driver on black tires on a green flag pit stop where you can come out. You don't have to worry about being in traffic and, and hold off basically all these other vultures that you have out there, putting you in bad positions when you've got the tires that you know, don't have all the grip that you want out of them. As, as you can see right there, Sam, that's a flat out corner as you come out and coming up to the last corner. He had problems just holding the power down. So doing that big, long spinning around burnout could have killed the rear tires on his car. And I think it, he has his hands full right now and he, he's got to just be calm. And if he had collected somebody, he's the most penalized driver so far this season. He has five penalties that have been called on him, three on pit road, two on the racetrack. And that's that keeping that calm head. It's almost like a football team that's really good, but they get flagged a lot. Yeah, well, now is the time, Brian, that he's really got to keep yep. a calm head and not make a second mistake and, uh, and have another problem and really cost himself. The guy that sat and strategized and thought it all through was Mike Conway. Look at this restart. Phenomenal restart. I mean, he just oh, caught, just. caught Kanan sleeping. Absolutely spectacular side by side and then stays on the outside of two and you wouldn't expect that to work But it certainly worked and that's got to put a smile on Ed Carpenter's face And I'm with him now. He just watched that replay. What did you think of that restart? Uh, Mike did a great job, you know, I mean he, When you get him in these situations, he seems to rise to the challenge. So uh, We're looking like we're in good shape We've obviously got to hit a fuel number, but pretty much everyone does at this point. So as long as we can make our number, I think we'll be in good shape. Looking for a third win from Mike in this limited schedule. You have your own win. Did you imagine that you could have put together such a strong season with the two of you? We were hopeful, and I'm just trying to keep up now. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ed. Well, think about how good that team is going to be next year when they join forces with 
Sarah Fisher's program, and Ed will be back in the seat next week at Fontana. For Conway, 12th race this season, fifth time he's led, so Conway having a great run. Graham Rahal still holding down fourth. He is having a good run, Kevin. Bobby Rahal has been talking to Graham throughout the day. Is this strategy and all the changes, is it working out in Graham's favor? Well, so far it's working for us. You know, uh, we're on a different strategy now. Canaan, uh, Briscoe, and us are all in the same uh, on the same uh, strategy. So it's just a matter of us uh, staying tough here on black tires. Uh, guys like Dixon are on black, so that's good. We're in sync with those guys. The reds seem to be a little bit better, but uh, get through this run and see where we are. All right, Graham Rahal last pitted on lap 31. He's got an opportunity. He said he's always been pretty good here, even though it's one of the most difficult tracks he comes to. I think he made a very excellent point. Everybody around him, with the exception of Sato, who's behind him, is on blacks as well. So it's a pretty even playing field. And Sato, you see him there, the fourth car in line. He's about three or four car lengths back, so Graham doesn't really have to worry about him right now. No, he can keep the pressure on Briscoe. He's got the two Ganassi cars in front of him. So uh, Kanan obviously struggling. Mike Conway has completely disappeared out of the screen. So uh, he's just got to keep the pressure on Briscoe and hopefully force him into a mistake be able to get by and it's a good day right now for Graham he's having a good day for, for the guard car up and over 3b down into four it's Tony Kanaan and Mike Conway has checked out over these guys over five and a half seconds in hand and where is Will Power in all of this he's dropped all the way back to 20th position we saw Conway out of the shot and look back down. Graham Rahal takes a peek inside the number eight of Ryan Briscoe. Streaming down towards seven. There's the field. Where's Will Power? He's the last car in your shot. This is the same corner where Will Power had the problems just a few laps ago. And this is what it looked like from his onboard. Drifting competition here at Sonoma Raceway. Right. Will Power, who led early, has his problems, but for Mike Conway, he's taken over the point, and he went again in 2014, this time in California. Welcome back to Sonoma with just two races to go. Championship implications are at stake, but for this man, Mike Conway, who leads the field, he's looking for his third win of the season, running only the road course is a limited schedule. He has got a six second gap and he is hitting his fuel numbers as he continues to run and on, on and an alternative strategy, putting out quite an effort for Ed Carpenter Racing, Marty. Kelly Way back there is Tony Kanaan in the second position. They pitted on lap 31. That's how they were able to get this track position. You know, TK's last podium here at Sonoma, 2008. I think he would love to get one today. Right behind him is Ryan Briscoe. What a recovery for this race team. Their last pit stop, lap 25. They'll have to pit at any moment for Ryan Briscoe. On the last stop, they lowered the air pressure all the way around, still trying to get some grip in this eight car, Kevin. A good run for Takuma Sato so far. They weren't sure what they were going to have, and for Graham Rahal, right in front of him as well. Rahal has pitted on lap 31, so he's got to come in a little bit sooner than some of those right behind him. And then we find Takuma Sato chasing him. Sato is on the same strategy at this point as those that he has uh, been dealing with him with Scott Dixon right behind him. Good car so far for Takuma Sato. Scott Dixon. Last pitted on lap 37, got past Will Power before Power spun. Dixon has been on a roll lately, podium in five of the last six races. Dixon making his move a little bit too late to win the championship, but can still be a factor, Marty. Kevin back there, Joseph Newgarden currently in the seventh position. Look for these guys to pit here in the next couple of laps. They've had a pretty good car today. You know, it's funny, his best ever finish here, 23rd. He told me in my rookie season, this was my worst racetrack. We came here, we were two seconds off the entire weekend, never figured it out. They figured it out this weekend. He would love to get a top five out of this thing. Juan Montoya told us in the pre-race show, I promise I'm gonna make it interesting. He is delivering, he's driven from 19th to 8th. The car, very good. A little bit of understeer, that's it. Kelly? Ryan Hunter Ray qualified 10th, but he was very strong throughout practices. They just missed in that qualifying session. Remember, he's fourth in the points and still alive in that championship chase. He said he feels like, though, to win this thing, he's got to win these two races, and Will Power has to DNF. If that happens, he's headed straight to Vegas. Kevin? 
Kelly, how about this race for Charlie Kimball? Started in the 11th position. Believe it or not, that's his best road and street course start of the season. He told me yesterday, I'm tired of trying to pass the entire field during a race. They always wind up finishing in the top 10. He's had a car that's been a little too much understeer for much of the day. They did a wing adjustment and air pressure on the last stop. Kevin. Marty, it's another impressive day for rookie Michaela Lotion. Every week, it's a brand new track, so he spends time learning the circuit. He has tested here, but it was all the way back in February, and he said when he came back, everything had changed, but he's figured it out quickly once again, and he's been running in the top 10. He's on the same strategy right now, so he should cycle forward as this race progresses. Marco Andretti, we find him behind, coming in the screen in a yellow and blue Snapple car. Kyle Moyer said before the race that the morning warm-up was good. In fact, he said the only time that they have not been very good was in the qualifying session. That was more because of lap traffic. They didn't get the lap that they wanted. The car has been strong throughout, Kelly. Simon Pagano, who was third in the championship standing, struggled all weekend long with braking. Felt like he couldn't get the rear to stick, but he has been quiet over the radio. Things look to be better. He's on a slightly different strategy than some of the people around him. We'll see how that pans out. Well, Kelly, as we promised, Ryan Briscoe coming to pit road. They've had a nice run here, getting up in the top five after that problem on the first corner of the very first lap of the day for Ryan Briscoe. He has had a trouble with this car just having no grip at all. They're going to put on primary sticker tires for Ryan Briscoe and give up all that track position, get him back on the track. We expect Joseph Newgarden this lap as well. You're clear. Ryan Briscoe clear out of pit lane. We didn't get back to Will Power. If you just joined us, you didn't hear his name in the through the field rundown. And the reason is he is further back in 17th position. He spun in turn seven and has more than likely damaged those rear tires. It was on a restart, the first lap after a restart. He's going to have to run with those rear tires that aren't providing the grip that he needs right now until they get to a window where he can come in and change them. And that is going to damage his championship. And we have, Lead a uh, little bit, but yeah, we've got uh, he's gotten clear of Saavedra now. So the next car in front of him is Castro Neves. So he's going to want to close the gap to that. But obviously now Castro Neves has got him in the rear view mirror and will probably not want to let him go by. So this is your championship right here. But still in the in the picture is Dixon, Hunter Ray. They still have a mathematical chance of getting the job done next week. Well, absolutely they do, and we thought the championship fight would take place at the front of the field. Right now, the championship fight taking place in 16th and 17th. We'll be back to more from Sonoma right after this. With 51 laps complete, let's take a look at a race recap. All the action started at the drop of the green up in turn two. Sebastian Bourdais with a problem that involved Ryan hunter Ray, Elio Castroneves. Second in the championship involved, so was James Hinchcliffe. Numerous cars had to sh thread their way through that mess. And for Castro Neves, damage. Yeah, it was odd to me that they would come in and try to cut that off unless it was it was rubbing on the tire. But again, he's tied up here with Sebastian Bourdais. Second time of the day, he's had contact. Hearts flying, cars spinning. And those yellows have led to more yellows. And then a full course caution, and Scott Dixon beats Will Power out of pit lane. Spectacular work by the Target Chip Ganassi crew. And then on the restart, Mike Conway. What a move. I mean, side by side with Kanan up through turn two, runs the outside, gets the job done. That was impressive. But at the back part of the field, Will Power trying to run side by side with Newgarden through seven. Pretty hard to get your hand on the clutch when your hand's not even <laughs> on the steering wheel. I think that's why he had the throttle buried and spun the tires because the wheel was spinning around and he couldn't get to the clutch. But as we look at Conway here, I mean, look at this guy. He's, he's a part-time guy here by choice. And if that was me, Sam, I would be thinking, uh, having a hard think about, do I want to come back into this championship full-time? Uh, you have a merged team now with Sarah Fisher and Ed Carpenter. They are both very experienced on ovals. Maybe they can give him the coaching that he needed on the ovals to give him the confidence 
to run these things full time and maybe run for a championship. He's a little bit older and a little bit wiser now too as well <laughs> as having that opportunity to learn some things to go through a program where he's a test driver a lot of times. He also does comes and does the, the road courses here on the IndyCar series. But I don't think that we can overstate at all how impressive that was that he passed Kanana around the outside of turn one here. Will Power just had another problem. This is down in 9A under braking. And this is one of those things again for Power when it when it goes wrong, it really all goes wrong on the day. And guys, you can just imagine how bad those tires are on Will Power's car right now. As you mentioned, likely flat-spotted PT. We'll certainly see them once they come off the car. He said the car is so loose, he can barely hang on to it. Tim Sendrick trying to do his best to coach him to hang with a group in front of him, but he obviously he's gone on tra off track once again. And they're asking him to save fuel as well. So a lot going on inside that 12 car. He had no sleep last night, has to be tired, a lot of pressure on his shoulders here, but he has to focus forward. And, and he's lucky he dodged a bullet with yeah, that spin. The crazy thing is he had one small mistake, a spin, and he has not been able to recover from it. And you've seen guys like Bourdais and, and uh, Hunter, you know, a couple guys have had first corner wrecks that have been in multiple accidents, and they're up front. You know, Sato was off the track. You know, Montoya was off the track. Kimball was off the track. So all of these guys, as the points now have, have tightened up. And here we got a nice little battle with Montoya, who also had problems at the beginning. He's back in the race here. New Garden's in there, so is Ryan Hunter Ray. So it's Juan Pablo Montoya and his number two out in front of Joseph Newgarden. And I thought Newgarden might be able to claw his way back towards the front just a little bit more than what he has. He's kind of mired right now in seventh. The meat in the sandwich between Montoya and his red and white number two and the yellow 28 of Ryan Hunter Ray. It just goes to show you exactly how competitive this series is. You've got two guys like Newgarden and Power that were so dominant, so fast early on in the race. They get themselves back a little bit of traffic. And now Graham is able to get around Kanan, which oh. is a big thing for him with, yeah, with all the races down. with those guys. <laughs> he, almost, he almost stop checked him at the, at the apex there to try to stop Kanan nice from job. trying to Go get, get him. an over under. And now he's got the legs on him. He, I think he'll pull away from, from Kanan now because he's been stalking him for probably 15 laps. Well, and they have obviously found a setup on Graham Rahal's car that is working. Now Takuma Sato beginning to close in on Kanan in the red, white, and blue number 14 from A.J. Foyt racing. You see right behind Kanan closing up on the apex of 11, and Graham Rahal indeed pulling out three, four, five car lengths. And what a day he's having. He was complaining on the radio to his dad earlier when he was leading Dixon and not losing any sight to the guys in front. His car was no good. Now he's running in second place. He's on the right strategy. And uh, hopefully he can pull this one off. It's probably still not any good, Paul. He's not yeah. <laughs> He's not leading the race yet. That's exactly yeah, every you, Every driver, it doesn't matter. You if drivers. you're second and back, it's not good enough. Yeah, true. Never, true never good enough. Larry Foyt calling the shots at AJ Foyt Racing has done a good job to get Sato moving towards the front of the grid. He qualified back, but having a good run here. He's on the alternate red tires right now. and holding on to the back of Kanani and dropped back a little bit, but I think that battle between Graham Rahal and uh, Kanan had allowed Sato to kind of close back in, and now Dixon beginning to close up behind Sato. Yeah, as we see these guys right now, they're all trying to make a fuel number and get to their last stop here. And uh, fuel is tight for these guys, especially for, for Conway, but they say that he's making his numbers and still pulling away, so it could look good for him. He's got a clear road and not able to, not having to fight anybody. Time to conserve just a little bit. Save a little bit more fuel so you can make that final run to the checkered flag. 55 laps in the books. There's more coming your way. Graham Ray Hall, Tony Kanaan just pitted and took fuel and alternate tires. We weren't expecting them that early. It'll be interesting to see if they can make it to the checkered flag as Mike Conway continues to lead and that elevates to Kumasato to second, Scott Dixon to third. Montoya to fourth with the uh, first corner accident all the way he's starting at the back of the field already and he's driven his way all the way through the field to a fourth place about two more laps here great job say about two more laps for Mike Conway before he comes in stellar job today he's been the test and reserve driver for the Toyota World Endurance Championship team and that has helped I think his road course racing and his development skills there's a look back to Juan Pablo Montoya running fourth right now and this guy just never, never gives up. He's just always digging all the time. Doesn't matter where he starts, he drives through the field. 
uh, still a factor in the championship with both of his teammates way in the back. He's still got a shot at this thing. And you guys are right. He has absolutely driven his way through the field. They've been able to go pretty much the alternate tires all day long. On this last stint, Juan Pablo Montoya will have to go to primary tires for the last run of this race. But an impressive day for Juan Pablo. And believe it or not, his first ever IndyCar race at Sonoma. One here in NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, but never been here in an IndyCar until today. Sam, you surprised that Juan Pablo Montoya has been able to make the transition back from a stock car into successfully into an Indy car. It's easy to step back in. It's difficult to step back in and be good. Montoya has been able to be a proven winner in pretty much everything that he's been yeah. in from the kart series to Formula One, NASCAR. You know, he's won a lot of races over the years and he took the right approach about it this year. He started off the season. He came down here. He finished the races. He did exactly what he needed to do to get himself the most time in the car and learning about what is going to make him fast. And then the second half of the season has really proved on you know exactly where he is and has gained a lot of speed and came close to winning a lot of races. Well, I, I expected him to get up to speed a little bit more quicker. I was expecting to see the the young Montoya, <laughs> but and I, I was giving him some grief at Long Beach as we see Pagano come in. But you know Montoya now he's got some salt and pepper hair. He's he's getting up there. It took him a little bit longer than even he thought. As we see a nice pit stop by Pagano, he's not had a great day. It's been a struggle for him. Brake issues all weekend. But, uh, you know, Montoya is a guy that you just can never count him out. Well, it's interesting. The, the other thing is when he's made the transition back, he hasn't put a wheel wrong. He has zero DNFs on the season. So he, he's done it, I think, like you said, Sam, very methodically and uh, has been, in my mind, surprisingly quick. I thought it might take a little bit longer. Un unlike how he was in NASCAR, Sam, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a lot of friends over there, Pete. I'm not going to speculate on that. <laughs> We, we didn't ask you to speculate. We just asked you to <laughs> tell us it's, it's a yes or no answer. Uh, uh, I'm getting body language from Sam again. Not a lot of words, but a lot of body language. The guy who's been putting it to the competition on the racetrack, Mike Conway, now on okay, pit road. Field, half turn front wing. Kelly? Great job here. Right on the you heard the call from that half a turn of front wing. Now he has opened up nearly a 10 second gap and as much credit is due to Mike Conway on track. Equal credit goes to the crew on strategy. It was strategy on the West Streets of Toronto that helped give him the win there and it was strategy in Long Beach that got him the win from 17th place and not to jinx him but guess where he started today? Will, 17th. Overtake up the hill. Overtake up the hill. Well, there you have it. You hear him say, use overtake up the hill. Waiting for Graham Rahal to see where he comes out as the cars will begin to cycle through their final round of pit stops. There he is. Where's Conway? He's gone. Yeah, well, that 10-second gap is a lot smaller than it was. So Conway has some traffic that has not pitted yet in front of him, guys, on older tires. So they could hold him up a little bit. Fresh tires are premium here. So... Graham Rahal has closed a big gap of 10 seconds down to probably two, two or three now. So, but you know Conway is going to have fresher tires, so it'll be interesting to see if he can pull out a little bit. Right now, Graham Rahal with traffic in front, he's going to want to work through that, see if he can't move forward. And Sebastian Saavedra, Saavedra yeah, has had his problems. Yeah, today. hopefully he doesn't get held up by these guys that are lapped cars now as he dives down inside outside, Saavedra. Outside. Uh, Will Powers, the next car in front of him, so. Hopefully these guys don't give him too much grief and we can get a race on our hands. Now Ray Hall all over the back of power. Power still out there on the blacks. And you got to feel that the car not underneath them, as Marty had talked about earlier, very, very loose. And Takuma Sato is now coming in. Yeah, this is not what Conway wants, these lapped cars in front of him, because as we go to Kevin. And Scott Dixon is going to also pit, so Sato has to go around that tire. It's the fourth time this season that Takuma Sato has led. You see Dixon right behind him, also pitting. He's still in the mix. They both have sticker red tires, and it's a much quicker no, 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 stop no, no, no. for Scott Dixon, and he has to evade Marco Andretti, and it's a slow, very damaging stop for Sato. Wow, Will Power also in. It is busy on pit road. Newgarden now. Marty? You see Joseph Newgarden going out, also Charlie Kimball going out, sticker reds for both of those guys. Will Power had to weave his way into his stall. We're going to check those tires once they come off. You see the sticker reds going on. He said the car was extremely loose on those tires that were likely flat spotted. He leaves pit road trying to make as much time as he can. Should be the last stop for all of these guys. 
man, I'll tell you what, that's worst case scenario when <laughs> you, you hear now. on the radio that your guys say, go, 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 stop, 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 and uh, the tires are spinning and you're moving already. Yeah, and they're telling you to, whoa. I mean, it got busy down there. Everybody's gotten to their window, and you want to get in as soon as you possibly can, and that's what they all did. It got busy on pit road. Ryan Hunter Ray now in. They cycle through Ryan Hunter Ray in the Ryan second Hunter position. Ryan, They've got sticker mark. reds laid out for him. And as he's on these old tires, just recently, Ryan coming over the radio complaining of a massive vibration. We haven't heard of any adjustments that they'll make. They must stop for Ryan Hunter Ray, Kevin. Well, it's been awful for Elio Castroneves today, but others' misfortune has kept him in the mix. James Hinchcliffe also is going to be pitting. It's been a, a evil handling car there as we take a look at Hinchcliffe here today. He was involved in the early melee with Elio Hinchcliffe with a solid stop. He should be able to make it the rest of the way. And same for Castro Neves. All those that have come in earlier are going to be a little bit tight on getting home the rest of the way without a caution. Sam, you're shaking your head. It, just waiting a very long time for fuel there. You know, this is one of the shortest windows that they're, they're going to have. I mean, obviously, um, they're not going to have to stretch it too much. But uh, got some great racing going on out there. Whether it's pit road or it's on the racetrack, there's a lot, of, a lot happening. Marco Andretti seems to be right in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah hot tires, cold tires. Guys are mixing it up, teammates. Yeah. Uh, there's racing right now all over the track. Even though Conway's got a big lead, those guys just banging wheels. And as we see, Marco trying to make it over under here. Around the outside. Uh, that's a tough one to pull <laughs> off right there. That's a strong move by Marco. And Hinchcliffe looks to kind of come back on him. James Hinchcliffe at the back of that serial right there, putting pressure on Marco Andretti, but Andretti, I think, with a little bit better car after the problems early on for Hinchcliffe. Marty? Well, guys, we wrap up the cycle of green flag stops here. Juan Montoya, left side of your screen, hits pit road. They'll put on the primary tires, a sticker set for Montoya, who said the car was so good during that run. He's driven his way into the top five after the second place finish at Milwaukee. We'd love to get back-to-back -back podiums today here at Sonoma. As we listen to John Booslog, who's a uh, longtime Penske guy, was my crew chief at Penske. Look at Graham. He's all over wow. the back of, of Mike Conway now. So 10 seconds he's closed the gap on. Great strategy. And we've got a, we've got a race on our hand and, now. And I thought Mike Conway would pull out a little bit more. I thought he had fresher tires, but Graham has closed the gap, that compression at the exit of six. You can see the car get a little bit loose there. And Ray Hall's got a car underneath him. He's going to make a move here, and he's got a power move breaking. Side by side. Conway hangs tough on the outside. He's out in the paint, but you can't put the power down out there in the paint. And Graham Ray Hall to the lead. National Guard up front, and he pushes Conway wide at the exit of seven. He was not to be denied. And now what can Graham Ray Hall do that he's in front? Can he pull away? Well, that's a great thing now about these new cars that have the side pods that stick out so far. In the past, when you would do a, th a thing like that and try to squeeze somebody at the exit of the corner, you always had to worry about whether or not they were going to keep their front end in there and you're going to pop up over top of them. Sebastian Bourdais just peeled off to come to pit road. Briscoe hits pit road, so those are the last of the few guys that needed to pit. But Graham Rahal, still there's a question of whether he can make it on fuel. He was in earlier than guys, so he wants to go and lead this race. But as we go to Kelly with Sebastian. Who's getting some stick of red Firestone tires. He has had a phenomenal end to the season on road courses. The last five road course races for Sebastian Bourdais. He had four top fives, including a win in Toronto and two poles as Ryan Briscoe comes in, Marty. Yes, he comes to a stop in a stall. They're going to give him one turn of front wing. They're going to put on those alternate red tires. They've been seeking grip in this car all day long. Just can't quite get it where Ryan Briscoe wants. Nice stop by the NTT data guys. He had a decent car in qualifying, but I think that off at the very beginning hurt Ryan Briscoe, but for Graham Rahal, they have made this car better and better, but Kevin, does he have the fuel to get to the checkered flag? I don't know. I think it's going to be very, very close. I don't see how they're going to get there without some help, but all they need is probably a couple of laps of yellow, and then I think they're in pretty good shape. He pitted on lap 58, 27. Seems like a really long stint. Graham leading for the first time since Detroit, his second time this year, Kelly. Well, and not to imply that Mike Conway let Graham Rahal buy, but that's the strategy that they figure, uh, that Ed Carpenter Racing figures Graham is on. They think he is in trouble on fuel and is really going to need to conserve, so they're going to let him hunt him down later on. I don't
don't really know if that looked like letting him go by, but, uh, uh, you know, right now for Graham, it's head down, elbows up, and go for it. Well, that's what you say from the car. Well, yeah, yeah I let him go. Let's talk about the pass, though. It was impressive. I mean, like I said, Graham was not to be denied. He hunted Mike Conway down, and then once he caught him, it was a pretty power move down in turn seven. Ray Hall to the left, Conway to the right. He really wasn't in good position going in there. You really used the brakes to be able to get in there. And I, I think Conway expected him to just follow him into the corner because he was still about three quarters of a car length back when they got to the braking zone. Another angle on board with Ray Hall. He knows he's still there, doesn't he, Paul? Yeah, good, good, good spotting by his by his guy that's up on top of the hill. You need to know where those guys are because it's out of his peripheral by then. But you know, at this point now, Graham really needs a win. Uh, it's been been quite a while for him to have a win. So you know, this is a golden opportunity for him. Well, and if you're Mike Conway and you're thinking that Graham Rahal is short on fuel, then you've got to be thinking the same thing for Tony Kanaan because Kanaan had pitted on the same lap that Rahal did. Marty? And, guys, that's going to be awfully close for Tony Kanaan as well. A lot of conversation about fuel. They went 26 laps on their run before this one. They pitted at lap 57. That's going to be awfully tight for them to be able to make it all the way on fuel PT. You, you drivers never listen when there's a chance to win, do you, to drive to the fuel number you need to drive to? Well, I mean, you got to use your experience. There's no nobody here at the front that's more experienced than Kanaan, and right behind him, Dixon. So... Uh, we know Dixon went a lap or two further than this front three guys, so it could be him that could hit the, hit the victory lane. Strategy coming into play big time in the closing laps here from Sonoma for Graham Rahal, his last IndyCar win, St. Pete in 2008. Can he win one in 2014? Graham Rahal out in front. Remember, you can lead an IndyCar race too, like Kelly Yeager did at the beginning of the day. Just be a part of Honda's fastest seat and sports sweepstakes. Just go to shophonda.com to sign up. Enter for your chance to lead the start of a Verizon IndyCar Series race. No purchase necessary. I think I'm going to go there and see if I can get a ride with Mario. I'll give you a ride. I th How think I'll that? see if I'm I can out. get a ride with Mario. <laughs> I'll give you a ride. <laughs> I think I'll see if I can get a ride with Mario. <laughs> I think maybe Paul wasn't hearing me well. I'm not riding with Mario either. <laughs> oh, come on, Sam. Oh, I would. Right now, it's a Honda that leads Graham Rahal out in front in really his National Guard. Fuel. Just talking about fuel to Graham Rahal and then Mike Conway. Conway stopped on lap 60. It was lap 57 for Graham Rahal. 57 for Tony Kanaan as well. Maybe Scott Dixon's in the best spot of anybody. He's got another lap of fuel over Mike Conway. He's yeah. closed in 1.2 seconds on Ray Hall over the last two laps, and he's closed in just about the same amount on the second, third place cars way, as well. The way I see this, Sam, is these guys all pitted about two laps shy of, of Dixon, and I think they're gonna need a yellow, to, at least two laps of yellow to make this happen. Certainly Graham was the earliest of these guys to pit. And I look at Dixon in fourth, and he did the same thing at the end of last season, just better, 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 and walks away with a championship the last half of the season. In fact, over the last six races, not a finish out of the top 10, only one out of the top five, including a victory from dead last at Mid-Ohio. I mean, he is so strong in the second and, half of the season. And the guy right behind him in the picture is Ryan hunter Ray, who's still mathematically alive. So. He's, uh, these two guys, series champions, both have done it from chasing from behind, still keeping themselves in the picture. You know, this guy right here, Hunter Ray, last week said, my championship is over. He could come out of here with a second place finish. Absolutely. As you look from turn seven back down the racetrack, there's Graham Ray Hall. You can see a yellow helmet. That's different than what Graham normally is wearing, and that's through a helmet design contest through his website. It was designed by 10-year-old cancer survivor Daniel Cooper, and that helmet is going to be auctioned off on Graham's eBay page with all the proceeds going to Alex's Lemonade Stand to raise funds for childhood cancer. And on that, the design includes Daniel's to-do list. Number one, beat cancer, check. Number two, grow hair, check. Number three, living my dreams, working on it. Great story. That helmet will be up for auction at Graham Ray Hall's website here and on eBay in just a few days. That's awesome. And Daniel, what a great job. It's a good looking helmet. And right now it looks even better for the Ray Hall team as it runs out in front. Looking at the number 10 of Tony Kanaan. But we talk about championship with only two races to go. Will Power, Elio Castroneves, 
power with that problem, that spin. He's worked his way back up into 15th, and more importantly, Paul, he's worked his way past Elio Castroneves. Yeah, that was key for him. He was stuck behind Castroneves and losing ground to him when he burned up those rear tires. Uh, he stayed calm, didn't make another mistake, had one little off through the dirt, uh, leapfrogged Castroneves on the pit stops. When Castroneves had a slow pit stop, they had a problem with the fuel, but now he's put quite a bit of distance between him and Castroneves, so uh, you know, nothing lost, nothing gained here. He's still got his closest rival behind him, but when you put Hunter Ray and Dixon and Pagano now in sixth, they're still in the mix for next week. So you're going to have a, a five to six car fight for the championship. Well, and you pointed out something a little bit earlier with the problems that Castro Neves had. He went through so many sets of alternate tires. He's on the primary tire right now, the black wall tire, and that tire just not proving to be as quick here at Sonoma. He stopped on lap, lap 62. You would think that that would be his last stint to the checkered flag. So. He's not going to have the grip that Will Power is because Power right now on the alternates on his final stint. Yeah, think about it next week, Sam. You, you've won a couple championships in the last race on a on an oval, on a on a super speedway and wired, you know, super close finishes. Imagine if you had six guys to fight in that race rather than one. You, you, this is one of the things that I, I've continued to watch. You know, Pagano's running uh, you know, right now. He's third in the points. But Hunter Ray just got by him a little bit ago. And that's the thing. You continue to try to keep yourself in position to be able to move forward, give yourself those opportunities. And when we look at where Will Power is right now in the points, in the two 500-mile races that we've run so far this year, he's finished eighth and tenth, which that gives you uh, approximately somewhere between uh, you know, 40 to 50 points for that race. You know, Elliot is only 48 right now. If he goes out there and wins, with double the points, he's still in the position that he can take care of this uh, championship. Yeah, it is far from over, and there are several players that want to have a say in how it's going to end up. Simon Pagano, one of those, he runs sixth right now, but for Graham Rahal, what a great day. He runs up front from Sonoma. Back in Sonoma, 12 laps to go, and Tony Kanaan gives up third position to come to pit road. Trouble in the left front tire as well. That's going to be a lengthy stop for these guys. They were not going to make it on fuel. The theory, pit now, get those fresh tires on, take as much advantage of those fresh tires as you can, but that long stop will certainly hurt Tony Kanaan, guys. And, of course, the tires that he put on are the primary, so he's not going to be going as quick. But what it tells me is that Graham Rahal, who stopped on the same lap, is going to be in that same situation. Do you stay out and just gamble and th that there's going to be a yellow, or do you make the decision that they did and say, we need to get it done now so we can make up the ground that we're going to lose? you got 11 more laps to be able to let that yellow come out. It just seems like awfully early, and to go off the red tires on the blacks, maybe they know something that we don't, but I, I, I don't see how that works out as a, a good play. Kevin? Graham Rahal pitted the last time the same time as Tony Kanaan, so it would seem they're on this same strategy, but they're going to try to get there the rest of the way. Bobby Rahal told him, I know this is a crazy fuel number, I'm telling you, but you got to try for it. Do everything you can. Short shift, we're going to try to get you there, and oh, by the way, keep Mike Conway behind you. Well, and interestingly enough, when Rahal got the lead, he was running about a second faster than uh, Mike Conway had been, so they have room to lean that out a little bit and burn a little bit less fuel. And I don't think Conway's the issue because he's trying to do I the agree. same thing. I think the two guys behind him, the two series champions, and Dixon and Hunter Ray are the guys they got to worry about. They're good to go and we're running full rich, not having to save fuel. They're on the same tires on the Reds. Those are the guys you got to worry about right now. It is. Kanan had to stop for fuel. That puts him behind Will Power. That we moves. We got a yellow. We're there. We just want to save some here. Moves power another position forward. You saw Graham Rahal lock a break into the hairpin. Bobby trying to keep him calm, saying, if we get a yellow, we'll be good. I'm waiting for him to throw something <laughs> off the racetrack because he's going to need it. Yellow. The problem with these yellows late in the race, things have spread out a little bit. You don't have as many cars around each other, so the potential for contact may not be as great. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the sure, yellows we've had sure have been on restarts and on the start when guys were... <laughs> crowding each other and banging into each other and spinning around. So the only yellow we've had once we've had some running is a car that had a, a mechanical issue and was pulled off the side of the track. So the likelihood of that happening is is not not very likely. Is Scott Dixon going to take another victory, Kevin? I think he's really the guy to watch because he's got a lap in hand on Mike Conway in front of him, four on Graham Rahal, who just radioed into Bobby Rahal and said, we're not going to make it. 
are we? And then we heard the tail end of that. Well, if we get a yellow, but Dixon has one lap more fuel. And we know how good he is at saving fuel, but don't forget about Hunter Ray behind him with one more lap. Mike Hall was telling me yesterday that one thing that Dixon does that's so impressive for a champion is that he's still always willing to learn. He's learned something from every teammate he's ever worked with. Dan Weldon, he learned how to be better on ovals. Dario Franchitti, better on street courses. And now Tony Kanaan is bringing some oval tricks to the trade for Scott Dixon. Well, Ray Hall continuing to lead. If he could hold on to the victory, it would be 11 race winners in 2014. That would tie the record. But Scott Dixon wants to have a say in that. Will he win again? Sonoma, the IndyCar Series. Graham Ray Hall looking for another victory. You see him out in front right now. That long straight into turn seven, that's a drag strip. And uh, right now there's somebody down in the Ray Hall pits who knows all about going fast in the straight line. Yeah, and she won here in the funny car uh, not long ago, just a few weeks ago. This is Courtney Force, who's here with her boyfriend, Graham Ray Hall. So uh, you're used to being the center of the attention, the driver. What are the emotions like as you watch Graham out there trying to win? It's extremely nerve wracking. I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't do well. Uh, being a spectator. It's crazy watching these uh, Indy cars. I mean, what they do is unbelievable, uh, especially going around our drag strip here. But you know what? It's a lot of fun, and I love being out here supporting Graham, and he's doing an amazing job. I'm just about to bite my fingernails off because I'm so nervous. And they're telling him to save fuel. He needs about 3.4 miles per gallon. What's your fuel mileage? Uh, Point two? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we actually burn about 15 gallons in one run, so. Hey, good, good luck to you guys. Thank you so much. I told him he's got to get a goblet with me, so uh, hopefully he can win this. All right, trying to make the couple both winners here at Sonoma this year. That's Courtney Force. It, the numbers are insane oh on these God. on these drag cars. I've been told that they'll burn 10 gallons of nitromethane faster than you can dump it out of a bucket. How big of a fuel line is sense. that? Like oh, it's a huge. Three inch, yeah. three inch line, so 15 gallons and a quarter mile. That's uh, they wouldn't be passing any EPA no, tests. No, no, <laughs> it really wouldn't. So, but how do you get three and a half miles of the gallon in an Indy car around here? Pretty tough around here with all the climbs, and uh, you know he's holding his own. He's starting to pull away from Conway a little bit, but you know he's really just got to work on that, on those uh, rolling off the gas and rolling through the middle of the corners, not leaving your braking to the last second and coast all the way into the corners, but. It's going to be a tough stretch for him to make it to the end. The only way that I can see that he's going to make 3.4 miles a gallon is if the yellow comes out because you're not going to do it and keep that lead. He's going to fall back more over five laps trying to save that much fuel as I think that he would, you know, actually trying to get out there and lead. Well, Paul, I mean, I think you've got a good point. You can reach up on the steering wheel and you can adjust the mixture. That's all well and good, but the driver's got a huge part in it. Well, for sure, the driver has a huge part in it. But this is also a good, you know, this is a good building block for Graham. He's had a pretty bad season and to run as competitively as he has to. I said it about Kanan. Once you get out and lead a race in Bordet, you get out and lead a race and you know that you can do it, uh, it, give, it builds confidence. So that this is a building block for him and this team to work on for next week and then take that into the offseason and be stronger. Speaking of next week, it looks like it's going to be a good points battle going into Fontana. Double points there. Remember, if we were on the old point system, the championship would be done, but it's double points at Fontana, so anything can happen. Right now, Will Power back in 14th, and we talked about guys who were pitting that were dropping in behind him. Well, perhaps more importantly, they're dropping in behind Will Power and in front of Elio Castroneves. Here's how it works right now. This is how they're running. Montoya, Power, and Castroneves. And for Elio Castroneves, just it all went wrong from turn two, lap one. Power trying to pick up every position that he can. It's another couple of points as he moves forward. And if Graham Rahal or Mike Conway has to pit, that'll be two more positions that he'll pick up. It's the championship this year that nobody wants to win. Nobody has been able to seize control of this thing. Power so dominant in so many races and then fall, having a problem. Castro Neves, the same thing. He's been dominant at certain points of the year. Dixon, the same. Hunter Ray, the same. The list goes on and on of guys that have, uh, in Pagano, three wins this year, having problems here and there. So nobody wants to seize control of this championship. Well, I think we talked about it before. When, about Elio Castroneves and Will Power coming in here. 
it, it doesn't necessarily have to be your fault, something that puts you back. That's what happened to Castro Neves at the start. For Will Power, what put him back was of his own doing. So both of those drivers suffering a little bit today, one of them at their own hands. And for Elio Castro Neves, who was up there at the start, he was a bit of a victim of the deal between Sebastian Bourdais when he got into the back of, of Ryan Briscoe. Yeah, the opportunity was there for him to still gain points on his teammate when he was ahead of him. And he had a good, healthy lead on him, but he had a little problem in the pits with the fuel, and now it's put him way behind him. So it's he just can't seem to buy a break and ever gain any ground on Will. Graham Rahal off turn 11. He'll come across the line in 80 laps will be complete. 80 of 85, five laps to go, a little over 10 miles around the Sonoma Raceway. And does he have enough ethanol in the tank? It's come down to it, 80 laps so far, and we've got the top four guys <laughs> within, you know, just under three seconds of each other. And it's an exciting amount of different strategies that are going on here, but even guys that are close, you know, one lap apart from each other, you know, Hunter Ray and Dixon both came from about eight seconds back to be able to close this gap up. But now that once they've got there, these guys are able to, to tune it up and to go just fast enough to keep them behind them for this point. And that's what makes it so hard when you're trying to save fuel is, you know, you don't want to give up those spots, but you, you got to go out there and continue to run hard. Well, and if you're Ryan Hunter Ray and you see Scott Dixon in front of you, you want by him for sure, because remember, they're still holding on to this championship. Yeah, and as we see these three guys running together, I mean, Mike Conway here is a perfect example of a guy. He's driving the final part of this race like he's driving the 24 hours of Le Mans, trying to get it to the end, not make any mistakes, no lockups, save as much fuel, be as good to the car as you can because a win is still on the cards for him. If he can make the numbers he has to, we're pretty sure that Graham is not going to make it, but he's doing everything he can do to hold off these two guys that are both series champions behind him. But you look at Graham beginning to pull out. I know it sounds crazy, but does he need to stop the march forward and just kind of, if he's got two and a half seconds, can he gather a little bit here, gather a little bit there as far as fuel goes, a lift a little bit earlier, try to maintain that gap, and there's certainly no reason to extend it. Yeah, I think the problem is it kind of is what it is. It is Sam. what it it's, is. Uh, <laughs> it's not much he can do. He's probably trying to save as much as he can, but, you know, Mike Conway's doing the same thing, but still holding off the guys that don't have to save fuel. One thing that you find a lot of times, you know, a crew chief will tell you or uh, a strategist will tell you, save a little bit of fuel, and all of a sudden, you'll start going faster, and they're like, I thought I told you to save fuel, and it's like, I am. You know, before, maybe I was driving in too deep into the corner, or I was trying to get back to the throttle too hard, and I was abusing the tires, and all of a sudden, you'll pick up a little bit of more speed just by being fluid with all your motions, what you're doing in the car. Driving school lessons, slow down to go fast sometime. Graham Rahal. All for not, all for not. Oh, he's upset. Yeah, we, so. swung for the we swung for the fences, you heard Bobby say. You all know, for not. That's, that's still, oh, as he makes a Graham's mistake not keep there. It together. Uh, he's uh, upset on the radio, and that led to a little bit of a mistake there. But, uh, you know, all for not, he said to his dad. And his dad said, hey, we swung for the fences and went for it. But still, at the end of the day, I think this was a good day for him. And Dixon now really beginning to put pressure on Conway. And I think for... Graham Rahal and the entire team, they can leave here this weekend holding their heads high. And for their sponsor, National Guard, Dixon up the inside of Conway. It's time to go. And he takes it with a power move very similar to what Conway had done on the restart. I think for Scott Dixon, he said, all right, it's time. I've got to go. I, I completely agree with you. I think, I think Dixon was just riding there waiting for, for these guys. And as we see Graham leaving the pits, see where, uh, we'll he, comes see where out. he ends up coming out in the line. As I was saying, they can hold think, their head high. I think once he saw Graham peel off, he said, all right, now's my chance. I'm going to go right now and turn it up and go. And now you see Dixon. He's just he's just reeling away from Conway. Pulling away, and more importantly, he's pulling away from Ryan Hunter Ray. Runner, Ryan Hunter Ray now looking to the inside of Conway. Here's a replay of the pass. Now we'll go back to it, and he clears him. Ryan Hunter Ray now clears Mike Conway. So three laps to go, two and a half, really, can Ryan Hunter Ray Scott hunt down Scott Dixon. I think Scott Dixon has made the, the timing of the, his move perfect. And I think Hunter Ray is looking for another a great podium finish to keep him in championship contention. But uh, these two guys, I think Conway's really just trying to hang on to get to the end. It doesn't even look like he ever got to full throttle here as, as Scott Dixon just completely oh, blew by him wow. like he was standing still. 
impressive. Just motors by him, and then Ryan Hunter Ray closing up behind. And as we said, Mike Conway probably having to save fuel as well. He may be one lap short. And now we hear Graham Rahal may. Yeah, he has gotten a penalty, a drive-through penalty for speed on pit lane. So frustration. That's, yeah, that's that's one of those things where he just, you know, he's upset. He lost his cool. He got got on his dad on the radio, you know, and. Uh, you know, those are the little mistakes you make when you're when you, you're seeing red, Sam. You start losing your focus and you start getting vocal on the radio. And everybody says, when you get mad, why don't you just not push the button? Why do you got to scream and push the button? Because if you don't push the button, you're just talking to yourself and you well, feel crazy. It makes you feel better sometimes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Justin Wilson leading this group right now. It's Justin Wilson in his familiar number 19 in front of Marco Andretti. And a good day for Marco. He's had a nice, solid day. Obviously, he slipped back a little bit now from where he was running earlier. Uh, it's a good top 10 finish for uh, for Wilson. But here we come back to the white flag this time by for the the road course master. Oh, it's just the guy from Mid Ohio who started Marco, last on the grid here. and an impressive, impressive run for Scott Dixon. Smart, clean, fast. And the white flag will be shown to Scott Dixon this time by. One good lap here. One good lap, and perhaps most importantly, in championship form, right behind the battle that we saw for 10th between Justin Wilson and Marco Andretti, Will Power now up to 12. Elio Castroneves still being shown back in 20th. That means nothing to this man, Scott Dixon, who's done everything he needed to do today. Look at Andretti on the outside of Wilson. This could end in heartbreak. Oh yeah, and look at look at uh, look at Power. He's in the mix of this. These wow. guys get into each other, and he could get be involved in it. Well, that's there's exactly really, what I was going to say. There's really no reason for it. We talked about it. It doesn't have to be your fault. And right now, as the championship leader, you've got Bourdais right behind you, and you got two guys fighting tooth and nail in front. This is in an uncomfortable position. Guys, Will Power sees those points right in front of him, but they're worried he's going to make it to the end on fuel. They're telling him no overtake. I know it's tempting, no overtake. We must make it to the checkered. Wow, he had last pitted on lap 61. Now Marco Andretti inside Whoa. Justin Wilson. They are wheel to wheel, maybe even a little bit of contact. Will Power right behind him, and now Bourdais putting pressure. But up front, Scott Dixon, he, the team, Chip Ganassi, Target Racing have played it perfectly. Scott Dixon onto the front straightaway. Scott Dixon wins at Sonoma Raceway. Well done. Ryan Hunter Ray finishes second. They stay in the championship hunt. Simon Pagano through as well in third. He had a bad weekend. It's come good. And Will Power trying to pick up another oh. position inside Justin Wilson. And he's going to lose a position not, to Bourdais. Perhaps yet. it's not, not done yet. yet. And, and they Bord make contact. Bourdais in the wall. And Conway not, not runs right out of fuel three feet from the line. He makes it. He made it across the line, but lost many positions. What a finish for Scott Dixon. It was relatively straightforward, but for Will Power, Justin Wilson, Sebastian Bourdais. You talk about taking some risk with Power on the last oh lap of the last corner and almost getting in the wall with two other guys. Justin Wilson out of fuel, Mike Conway out of fuel. Wow. And you've got to ask for Will Power, were the two points that he was going to gain really worth the risk that was taken? He comes out okay. But that's a gamble that a lot of drivers would not have been willing to make. And, and, and Will Power out, out of fuel. He's out of fuel as well. So, uh, you know, I know from my from myself driving for Roger. Roger just he doesn't like those kind of moves. Sam. Charlie Kimball out of fuel. That was definitely a lot of chance taking there, not only for points but also to to get yourself in a position where you could get hurt or do something by uh, by putting yourself just in a bad position when you don't really need to. You know, he comes out 53 points ahead, but. Man, that was a crazy last lap for those guys. Scott Dixon celebrating, but the excitement, while his team certainly celebrates, the excitement was a little further back. Right on board with Will Power here. Yeah, he comes down the inside, just stuffs it down in there, and just bang, right into the side of him, and that allows Bourdais to get up beside of both of these guys, and it's three wide through a single car width corner here, and Bourdais ended up getting pushed out into the wall. Well, and you saw him flash by Mike Conway, you see here, he slides wide into the side of Wilson, and here comes Bourdais 
drives it off the inside. Now you think Bordet is going to have it, but then Power just basically pushes him right over into the wall over here and bang oh. into the wall. But now what interests me is to the right side of the shot right there, there was a waving yellow flag really? because of the car of Mike Conway. So was all of that for naught or would there be a penalty for passing under a yellow? We'll have to see. Well, you have to think about the possibility for just a penalty in general for running into the side of Wilson there on the last corner. Let's go down to Kevin. Mike Hull called the strategy. Chip Ganassi has just uh, come up on the scooter. Another impressive day. And he didn't have to come from last this time, just third. No, it was great. You know, we had an early wake-up call this morning about 2.30, so we had plenty of time to think about it. But uh, hopefully all the people in the nap area are okay. Um, and it was an exciting race for everybody, I hope. It was certainly exciting for us, and it's really terrific that uh, we have a driver, a world-class driver like Scott, in a target car that gets to the front like he's able to do and then makes it happen for us. And three brilliant pit stops, too, for the number nine team. Mike Hall headed to victory lane to greet Scott Dixon. Wow, impressive stuff. Scott Dixon, we talked about the strategy, the speed. It all came together for the victory here. But go back to this shot. Here they come to the line. Look at As driver's right, the waving yellow flag right there because of Mike Conway on driver's left who has run out of fuel. Were those passes, were those passes under full course caution? Here they come. The, the caution is out, and then the other corner worker kind of grabs him and tells him to pull the flag in. So was the yellow out or was it not out? And that'll be interesting to see how that plays out, and it'll be a couple of points that are on the line. Scott Dixon, guess what? He could care less because he takes yet another victory. He moves into a tie with Bobby Unser for fifth on the all-time win list. Celebration's about to get underway. That beautiful crystal goblet here will be handed to him up on winner's podium. And impressive stuff. And it's what we've become accustomed to for Scott Dixon, especially late season charges. Well, it's like I said earlier, Brian, he's a guy that anywhere, any track, any place, any time, you can never count him out. And that's why he's always been a championship contender since the beginning of his career. Let's go down to Kevin in victory lane. Scott Dixon climbing out, absolutely victorious. Big time celebration for the target Chip Ganassi team. Win number 35, Scott Dixon has finished every lap in all 10 IndyCar races here at Sonoma, now tied with Bobby Unzer for fifth on the all-time list. You continue to move up the milestones, but let's talk about this race today. Last stint, did you think you had it? Were you just waiting until the leader came into pit, Ray Hall, before you went around Conway? It was tough. You know, there were so many strategies going on, and they were they were just slightly off. So, you know, I didn't know who could make it, who couldn't. Uh, you know, Conway, I think, pushed hard to start with, but then obviously at the end it looked like he had to save some fuel. So, <coughs> I don't know. I gotta, first of all, i got to say hi to Emma back home, and obviously Poppy and Tilly, they've been watching, and I uh, spoke to them just before the race, and love you, babe, love you, girls. Um, so excited, man. This is big for our team. We've had a, a pretty uh, rats year so far, but, uh, <laughs> you know, strategy was perfect. It was a bit mixed up, but, you know, so happy. We have a huge amount of target people here this weekend about uh, four or five hundred people so they're all in turn seven and uh, big shout out to them chip ganassi comes in you weren't feeling the best all this weekend i'm gonna guess you feel a lot better now yeah you know i've uh, been a little under the weather but but uh you know as you said some people actually do better when they're when they're, when they're yeah. not feeling so well but uh you know is we were close all weekend as soon as the car rolled off you know the target team's been very strong and and uh man i'm just so happy just so happy to end on this note and and thanks to obviously all the fans out here uh, this weekend it's a it's a big race for us in wine country and love coming here and hope everybody's safe after that big uh, rock and roll last night well, maybe too late for this year's championship, but last year's champion Scott Dixon has finished in the top five and six of the last seven with two wins, Brian. <laughs> and just a, there's an autograph. Somebody will get to take that home. I don't know that we can clean it off the lens. So celebration, a hug for Mike Hull. For Will Power, he's going to get towed back in. He finished ninth, and Elio Castroneves, second in the championship coming in, finished back in 18th. So wasn't the big points day that Will wanted, but still he finishes in front of Castroneves. Let's go to Kelly. With Ryan Hunter Ray, who finishes second, not the win you were looking for. Next best thing, though, as all those strategies played out there at the end, what were you thinking, Ryan? You know, it, it was going our way for a little bit there. Had a good start, picked my way through the um, through the mess that happened on the start there, and uh, we had a really good car, so I was able to move through traffic when I needed to. 
just that, that last set of, of tires we were on there, for some reason we, uh, we missed the pressures on them and they went high. I'm not sure what happened, but just had an imbalance and had nothing for Scott. You know, I was able to keep his, uh, keep his pace, but we passed the cars we needed to, got through there, and um, with one left, we kind of ran out of steam. Unfortunately, seconds, like you said, not what we needed, but, you know, it's a pretty good day. After the DNF you had last week at Milwaukee, does this give you a little bit of redemption here towards the end of the season? Yeah, it's nice for sure, you know. And it, when, when you have the championship on the line, though, we needed Will to have two really bad weekends. Well, he had one, and, uh, you know, we needed to win today. But the guys did a great job in the pit lane. I mean, they did a great job, and, uh, you know, we have everybody from DHL here, and uh, it's, um, it's just uh, it's a good team, team effort today. Ryan hunter Ray finishes second. Kevin? Beautiful day in Sonoma wraps up with Scott Dixon in victory lane. Will Power comes in our championship leader. He leaves as our championship leader. And let's chat about what was a very eventful day for you, Will. First of all, what happened in the first spin when you had just had that race off pit road with Scott Dixon? Uh, yeah, where I spun at the head Correct. There. Yeah, I mean, I was just, man, it took me by surprise. I, I was so tight because I had a car on the outside there. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to throw out the inside of Scott. Uh, just, I just, man, I was like, I couldn't believe it. Oh, uh, just surprised. I know it was because I was on blacks, but um, yep, thought I'd do a few celebratory uh, donuts just to show, you know, <laughs> bit of a show you know what you're doing. Show for the youngsters. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, man, uh, that's that's racing, but a good recovery tonight. I'm not sure how you got your hand on the clutch there that quickly. Yeah, I was just well, actually, I kept it off the clutch and just kept it spinning and just kept doing donuts and then took off. All right, let me ask you about the last lap. Tim kept telling you no overtake. You've got to save fuel to make sure you make it to the end. Was it worth the move there? Were you just going for points or what? Um, I was going for points, and it looked like an easier target because, uh, you know, Justin was very very much struggling. But, man, it <laughs> ripped the wheel out of my hand. I grabbed, pushed it past the last minute. And uh, I just I thought, this is going to be really interesting three wide here. It's going to be <laughs> – I couldn't believe I actually got, uh, got him. But, uh, yeah, that was – that was a hairy last uh, corner. You went from 12th to 9th on the last lap. Were you worried about making that move? And did you want to make it maybe a little bit earlier? No, I just saw the opportunity and I went for it. You know, I, I want to get the points. So that's, uh, that's racing. It's obviously been a very rough day. You've, you've been a guy who's promised every week you're just going to worry about the next week. You go into Fontana with a 53-point lead. How do you shake this one off? Um, yeah, just head down, man, like we have been. That's it. That's all. You ready to get some sleep? Yes, I am. <laughs> Believe me, what a night. I've uh, been up since 3.30 a.m., so ready to get some sleep. He's been up for a while. He will go to Fontana with a 53-point championship lead, and Tim Sendrick said on the radio afterwards, hey, you're the king of Fontana. Don't worry about anything. Kevin? And Marty Simon Pagino is also still mathematically alive heading to Fontana. He's third, 83 back. with a double points. It could happen. 15th to third, and let's go back to the start of this race. A lot of people got caught up in it. How did you squeeze your way through? Well, uh, I was in the right spot uh, there. I had to slow down. I didn't know where to go, and uh, I lost a lot of position, but at least the car was in one piece. And, uh, you know, at this point, I was a little frustrated because you, you don't know, you know, Sonoma is such a, such a hard track to pass on. So, you know, we made the race in the pits, really. Uh, the pit stop were awesome, and the uh, out lap and in lap were, were really good, and that's what made us uh, jump so many positions. Strategy was uh, very frustrating, very uh, very tough for me because I had saved so much fuel, but uh, we made it past Conway on the last corner, and uh, third, it's fantastic. I mean, this morning, I uh, never thought we would be third, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm delighted, and we're going in Fontana with, uh, with a chance to the title. So, as you know, Kevin, that's, uh, that was something very important to me. Yeah. And there were some strong conversations on the radio, too, with Rob Edwards trying to convince him that he could make it on fuel, Brian. Well, and we were just told that they were reordering the finish. We saw that yellow flag there, and, Paul, you talked about Will Power looking a little bit concerned. They've moved Justin Wilson to 11th and Will Power back to 12th right now on timing and scoring, so it'll be interesting to see if that's the way it settles down. Let's head back down to Kelly. With Mike Conway, who rolled to a stop just past that finish line, a strategy that nearly worked out perfectly for you, Mike. Was there anything more you could have done at the end of the race? Uh, not really. I mean, I was doing all I could to keep, you know, those boys behind. I could see they're a little bit quicker. But at the same time, I'm trying to save a lot of fuel and not let them catch me. So it was tricky, but I thought I was making a good job of it and uh, hit my numbers. And I thought better sometimes on laps. And I thought it would be good. But then uh, I suppose just that lap we we'll used overtake to stop. Uh, trying to stop Dixie getting by me was maybe hurt it a little bit. But 
Yeah, I couldn't do much more there, unfortunately. And then uh, I thought we'd hang on for a podium at least. And then as we got to the, through turn 10, it, um, it just died and then picked up again and then completely shut off coming out of uh, the last corner. So annoying, but, you know, good call from the whole team uh, with that strategy. And, you know, nearly worked. Just another 100 metres would have been all right. But uh, thanks to the whole team at Carpenter Racing for the whole year and uh, Chevrolet and Delara and all the partners, Fuzzies, um, you know, for, for making it all possible and for the great results and the good car today. Perhaps a bittersweet ending to the season here for Mike Conway. Well, it really epitomizes how close this Verizon IndyCar series is. Every bit of every lap. We'll update the points and we'll look toward Fontana when we come back. For Scott Dixon, quite the day at the GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma. He takes his second victory of the season. Here are the unofficial results, and we talk about that little melee at the finish. Justin Wilson gets credited with night, Will Power with 10, so he loses two points. But that, that was quite a battle for a couple of points. And I'll tell you what, my head is still spinning from this race today. It looked like it was going to be all power all weekend, and then he made a little tiny mistake. And the whole race went just crazy after that. And for a while, it looked like it was going to be Graham Rahal, Marty. And he is likely the guy most disappointed today. And, and let's talk about it. A, did you know you had to save fuel? And were you trying to save fuel? And, and B, is that the most frustrating feeling as a driver to have a winning car? It, yes, because I thought finally it was going to happen. I mean, I think all day we were dominant. I mean, when we had to pass people, we could go right on by him. I was really, really good out of six. And they told me the fuel number we needed to get, I was running a yellow map, which is like de way down on boost, way down, and I could still pull away from the guys, and I was getting the numbers that I needed to. Dad stopped telling me a number, so I thought, well, maybe. You just started counting down laps, and maybe it's going to happen. You know, maybe there is enough fuel. And then the pit light came on, and I knew that was it. But proud of these National Guard guys. Doesn't seem like we're going to win one, but we're going to. I can promise you that. Frustrating day for him, Brian. He told me, all things equal, we had a car that should have won this race. Yeah, they had a great car, but we talked about points. Will Power still has a 51-point lead. Sam, what do you take out of this? I take that the door is still open. You know, as much as Elio had problems today, the door is still open to give Elio that opportunity to go out there and to, to win next weekend and maybe give him a shot to win the championship. Will Power made another mistake today. It cost him. Yeah, I mean, what I take away from this is IndyCar has got the wildest racing on the planet. I mean, I don't think you can see any racing that changes so much as it does here in the IndyCar series. Well, and you saw, and Mike Hull talked about it earlier in the weekend. He said, it's as competitive now as I can ever remember it being. Well, that's for sure. I mean, you look at these guys, uh, Pagano still in the championship frame. It's going to be a fantastic weekend next week in Southern California. Absolutely, it will. Enjoyed it today. I hope you did as well. For Sam Hornish Jr., Paul Tracy, Marty Snyder, Kevin Lee, Kelly Stavis, and of course, Robin Miller. Thanks for joining us here in Sonoma. It was a great one. Stay with us. More from Sonoma Raceway is coming up. The Indy Lights Championship race is next. The Verizon IndyCar Series concludes on NBCSN Saturday. Be sure to join us for the season finale, 9 o'clock Eastern, for the MAV TV 500 from Auto Club Speedway. For more information on the Verizon IndyCar Series, log on to NBCSports.com.